Essex. Develop your career as a young professional on April 25th at the third annual YP Summit presented by Visit Baton Rouge. Hosted by the Baton Rouge Area Chamber and Forum 225. Don't miss this opportunity to envision your career path, how you want to grow, and ways you can apply your skills to better your community. Young professional, intern, college student, or manager, we encourage you to bring it at YP Summit. Register now at BRAC.org slash events. That's B-R-A-C dot org slash events. Events. Dutch Unlimited is excited to announce its ultimate allocated bourbon raffle. Friday, April 19th at Ascension Golf Carts on Riga Road in Baton Rouge. Tickets start at just $50 and include food, drinks, and a live and silent auction. Raffles for rare bottles and a bourbon tasting. Plus bonus prizes with a chance to win a set of Weller and Pappy Van Winkle 23 year. The Dutch Unlimited Bourbon Raffle. April 19th at Ascension Golf Carts in Baton Rouge. For tickets, visit DUBourbonRaffle.com. Doors open at 6. Buyers do not have to be present to win. DUBourbonRaffle.com. Insurance companies have teams of professionals to fight your claim. If you want to know what your case is really worth, I'm Spencer Callahan. I'd like to help. Spencer Callahan is the one to see. Call 387 LA filing number 16-7970. WNXX, Jackson, KNXX, Donaldsonville, and WDGLHD2 Baton Rouge. This hour brought to you by Spencer Callahan Injury Lawyers. LA 21-12681. Offices in Baton Rouge. Good morning. It's 7 a.m. on Monday, April 8th. Today in Baton Rouge, you can expect rainy skies with a high of 81. In hour one of today's show, we'll recap LSU versus Vandy on the baseball field. Talk a little LSU football and the New Orleans Pelicans. You can follow us on Twitter or Instagram at OTB underscore ESPN. And watch us on YouTube at the 104.5 ESPN channel. Hour number one of Off the Bench, live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge studios, starts now. Let's go! All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Jacob Hester and T-Bob Hebert. Yeah, 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 yeah! Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Hey, they said I gotta come off the bench. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Yo, yo, yo. Yo! What's up, y'all? Monday, April 8, 2024, and the whole crew is back together after spring break. We are risen! That's right, T-Bob, Jake, Alondra, Taylor, all hanging out with you this morning. And we got a full weekend of sports to recap. Uh, and it's a little bit of everything, man. Uh, local, national, basketball, baseball, a dash of football maybe in the mix as well. You've got some wrestling. It's WrestleMania went down this weekend. Uh, but before we get into the sporting weekend that was, how's everyone feeling here on this Monday morning? Eclipse Day. Is it today? Yep, Eclipse Day. Solar okay. uh, solar Eclipse coming at about, uh, I got the exact time in here. Give me a second. 1.48 p.m. this afternoon. I've got a ton of great local viewing options as well. If you want to go to the Louisiana Art and Science Museum, uh, you go to the LSU College of Science and Department of Physical Astronomy. Well, they're going to be on the parade grounds, excuse me. Uh, the Highland Road Park Observatory, of yeah, course, yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, going to kill it here. And then if you go to the uh, EBR Library. They're going to all those places are going to have uh, uh, Eclipse classes. You can go check it out with and just events going down. So, yeah, uh, solar eclipse, the last solar eclipse we will see around these parts for 20 years. So um, the next time this rolls around, you know, like Harlow will uh, be drinking, basically. Yeah. In college. Yeah. Bob yeah. will be legally 21. Yeah. So uh, I think. Get your eclipse while it's hot, and hopefully we'll be alive. I'll be okay. I'll be 58. I'll be okay. Knock on wood. I'll be okay. Okay, I feel sick to my stomach now. Anyway, eclipse day, how we feeling? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Good. I feel like I've, you know, not been here in so long. I'm not really sure where we, how far, like, I go back. Like, what do I talk about that I missed? Do I just say, you know what, forget it. I wasn't here. They had it covered. Between I Taylor mean, hosting and you coming back on Thursday? Well, Taylor did an awful job. Um, they almost had to cancel the show, so thank God they didn't. But uh, but I did great last Thursday and Friday. No, I don't know. Friday's show was actually probably one of the more but I did ridiculous great. that we had <laughs> in uh, in a long time. Uh, Alondra, how are we doing today? I'm doing well. Friday's show I definitely rock went a little off the rails. Rock the Country was awesome. It was a lot of fun. Saturday was more fun than Friday was, but... Kid Rock killed it. But no shotgun no, with Kid Rock. No, I'm so mm. sad about Alas. that. I know. Uh, yeah, we made Taylor, Jake, on Friday do a mid-segment beer run. 
Yeah. And he made it in eight minutes <laughs> to the gas station and back. You. <laughs> Very impressive. All right, so when y'all said like it was off the rails, I'm like, what are you talking about? Like no, this show it one, was... it always goes off the rails. Certainly on Fridays, it does. But mm -hmm. a beer run in the middle of the show, the that's even show. that's a new high for all. T-ball shotgunned one too, and he made it in eight minutes. And that well, was even my that's, fastest that's, shotgun. I mean, that's not I even mean, that's that's abnormal you saw for it. Friday. That, that shotgun was solid. You saw it, yeah. Taylor. Uh, how you feeling, dude? Uh, I'm doing good. We had a wedding on Friday. It was a good time. Oh yeah, yeah. I guess it went well. You cut a rug like you were planning on. Yeah, a little bit, a little mm -hmm. bit. It was a, uh, it was my first Catholic wedding, so it was a little first bit different. First ever, first ever first Catholic ever wedding. First ever full Catholic mass. You've lived in Louisiana uh, damn near thirty years, and first, this is your yep, first that's ever. Wild. The first one. Yeah. That yep. is wild. And you've lived in South Louisiana. Were you confused? You're like, what's going on? Yeah, why is it so I was. Why do I keep feeling? <laughs> like, I think our wedding <laughs> ceremony lasted fifteen <laughs> minutes. This one lasted hey, an wait. hour. So uh, Y'all yeah. go to church for like thirty-five minutes on Sundays, but three hours for weddings. <laughs> it's like an hour. What is going on here? Um, all right, so let's get into the weekend that was on the on the various fields, pitches, and whatnot. Um, I'm not gonna lie, guys. Friday night was a uh, was a bit of an exercise in misery. It had me it had me questioning why I let sports affect me to the level that I do. Right, and 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 just an especially painful twist. It was great until it wasn't. Right, like even though you're going up against the second best staff in the SEC in Vanderbilt, uh, you were you were playing very well Friday night. You had a lead. Now certainly there's stuff to be frustrated about, and we'll get into that. The fact that you immediately allowed them to respond every time you would gain a lead. Uh, the, the fact that you just let them run the bases as if like the ability to throw a person out does not exist. There, there, like there's a lot at this point to get to, but you were still playing very well. You're five outs away, and then Agonhausen gives up. The two-run shot. And at the same time, the Pelicans, in a must-have-it, must-win game in the Smoothie King Center, are busy blowing a big third-quarter lead to Alondra Spurs and Wimbiama and company. And and so it, it, was, it was one of those nights where for about 85% of the night, I'm having so much fun. I'm feeling good. You know, I'm feeling nervous because it's competition. Yeah. You never know. But, like, having fun, feeling good, drinking bourbon. And then the next thing you know, I'm just completely infuriated. Um, I allowed my kids to stay up. I started getting snappy with them. Just completely ruined. And, and it had me legitimately questioning, like, why do I care so much? I, I shouldn't allow this to affect me this deeply. I feel you because you see LSU go out there on Thursday. They win a game. And it's become a familiar story, right? Game one, you get the win there. Game two, you feel really good about it. And you feel good about it until like the eighth inning good about it because you're like, hey, whatever happens, we're going to find a way because that's the way this game's played out. And you have it right there, T. And look, you're in a situation right now that game three for you as LSU baseball is not going to be in your favor. Yeah, It's just not. The pitching matchup and the SEC does not favor you. And for whatever reason, I know you want to get into it, Game three, you have not been great. In fact, you've been bad, okay? So game two is highly important, even more so maybe than some other years because you feel like game three, you just don't have an opportunity to go be competitive right now. And when you have it and you have them on the ropes and you're like one Four punch outs. away from knocking them out of the ring. Four outs. And then they counterpunch and then you look up and you're looking at the ceiling because you're mm. on the mat and they're not. And, and remember, this is not an especially effective uh, Vanderbilt team hitting the ball, at least. And especially not with power. Yeah. I mean, four home runs in SEC play coming into this series, and then they basically win game two off of the power of their bats. And they, now they've been dominant swiping bags, and, and that was clear. But God, I actually love their, that style of Vanderbilt baseball. I mean, it's high pressure. It's yeah. high octane. You definitely feel them the entire time. I don't, I don't know if catchers, again, like, well... We can get into more of the specifics. Here in the opening time, I kind of want to talk more broad terms because I think this LSU baseball team has to learn how to win. Um, when I say they have the talent, they may not be among the elite of the SEC talent-wise, but they also aren't that far off. What I guess I mean when I say they have something like they have the talent, they have the a talent that is better than their three and nine record, right? You can't go into Little Rock and challenge the number one team in the country like you did and um, be awful. You can't uh, have Florida 
right there on the ropes about to win the series and be awful. Same thing with Vanderbilt. Like, these are the premier teams you guys see. And you may, you may not be quite on their level, but you're closer than your record would dictate. You can't have the out-of-conference success that you did and and be as bad as your SEC record is. And, and that's one of the most confusing parts about all this is all these teams had worse out-of-conference goes. Like, they yeah. were... They, you know, Mississippi State was out here getting swept by what? Like Austin P. Florida was like 13 and five or something. And, and so it's like, okay, so what is going wrong? And I, I, I don't know. Is it like they, they, they have to win? They have no confidence. I mean, certainly one thing that I think the, um, uh, the, the broadcast teams did a good job of, of, of pointing out and have done. And, and maybe, I don't know why it's just kind of missed me up to this point this year is you are dealing with a completely new team, you know? Um, both in terms of the coaches and in terms of the players, and it's coming off the edge of a championship. And if you watched all of game two, you heard Paul Maneri's, I think it was like a two-inning interview, and it was fantastic. I mean, really, really fantastic. But he talked about telling Coach Johnson and and, and, and other conversations that he had skipped that the, the hardest year he had was after winning the national championship. And then I think back to even somebody like Nick Saban, who by the end of his career, we, we started to say, well, Saban doesn't rebuild, he just reloads, right? Yeah. But what happened after that 03 championship at LSU? What happened the next year? Uh, we were nine and three. Nine and three. We were nine and two and lost the bowl end game. Up, um, end up Iowa. losing to Iowa. Drew Tate, the last thing in Hail Mary, but almost lost to Oregon State game one in Death Valley. Or right? should have. Damn near yeah, should have, you yeah. would say. Um, the point is. Yeah, these the, the the championship hangover is a real thing, especially for a younger coach that wins their first one. So when you combine with that, an entirely new team, new staff, maybe that's one of the re- reasons why you're seeing what um what you're seeing currently. Now, I still think this team gets frisky, and I think they become a team that will make a regional host very nervous by the time this year ends. Um, I, I, I do believe that, but I also do believe that we've seen enough now where I've adjusted my ceiling significantly. And I'm, I'm no longer thinking that this is a team that is going to vie for championships. And so, you know what I want, dude, you know what I want more than anything? Cause I'm along for the ride, right? right. I'm not going to stop watching. Like I still love this program. I love college baseball, SEC baseball specifically, um, this may not be a championship team, but I want to see one that's going to fight. You know, I ain't going nowhere. I want to see one that's going to do everything they can do to try to make it hard on the opponent. Stop rolling over. I want to see a team that looks desperate and I'm going to keep watching and I want to see who has some balls and that's what we're going to learn, right? Adversity. Reveals the man. Okay, well, here you're three and nine in the SEC. Who has the cojones to stand up and 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 still bring it every single weekend and not be dismayed or not feel sorry for yourself and not just give up on the season? I'm with you, T, because I mean, you do, like you said, you do have the talent to be able to go out there and and write some of the ship. Now, I don't know that you can get it all the way yeah. where you want it to go because of how you've started, but you still have an opportunity to do a couple of things here because you do have the talent, because you do have uh, you know a Friday and a Saturday night guy that are at least going to give you the opportunity. And so you're waiting for some players to step up, and Jay Johnson is putting different guys in the lineup now. You're seeing mm-hmm. different guys get a chance on the mound as well because you can tell like he's looking for that. And so it's something in the schedule. Like, the schedule's been been brutal it is but that's the sec yeah. and it's not easing up i mean you got two more tough series that that are coming up on your schedule so you have to go out there and you have to do those things and for whatever reason the last you know now three national champs it it's been a struggle the next year yeah, yeah how about that? mississippi yeah. state 26 and 30 <laughs> yeah. the year following their championship Ole miss 25 and 29 the year following their national championship uh, yeah. reasons why like you said i don't really know you know those teams are talented. You know they've got Jimmy's and Joes. Now they they all lost a lot. Yeah. But still, like your point, and I agree with you, this team is too talented to go lay down. They're better again. The 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 over and 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 I don't want I can already hear, I haven't looked at Chat yet. I can already hear people yelling, they're not that talented. They suck. I, okay, well, like whatever. We don't have to get into an argument about ceiling. What I'm saying is I think there's ample evidence that they're more talented than their record would dictate. You should not be losing this many high leverage moments this consistently, 
right? Like, like that, 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 that when, when, when coaches talking about, talk about, uh, learning to win, which is kind of ethereal. And it's like, well, how do you quantify that? How do you, how do you, I, I don't exactly know. Right. But this team needs to learn how to win. Um, and, yeah. And, th- and those games, those game twos, like that, that's learning. That's what we're talking about. That's the process yes. of learning how to win. And it's not like you don't have players that have done it before. Individual players have done it, but as a team, you have to learn how to do it. And then, um, and then day three, we just, I mean, we'll get into day three a bit later. And then you have the Pelicans who, uh, I would describe their weekend as uh, a bit of Harry and Lloyd, a dumb and dumber weekend, if you will, because right when I thought you couldn't go and piss me off anymore or disappoint me anymore, you totally redeem yourself, especially you, Zion Williamson, with a massive win Sunday night in Phoenix against the full-strength Suns teams. And it's, and it's crazy because, I mean, again, Friday – was one of the lowest points in my Pelicans fanhood ever, which sounds crazy coming off of what, what has been a really good season up to this point, right? But I, but I was I was catching myself feeling legitimate guilt for for the narrative uh, before I left for Mexico. Talking about you know this time Lucy ain't pulling the football. I was I was I'm sitting there looking in the mirror. I'm like, are you Charlie Brown? Are you an idiot? Are you falling for it again? I, was, I wasn't even mad at Zion, but I was so disappointed. We talked about it Friday in studio after the show ended. Like, a finger bruise, it's the biggest game of your career up to this point. You need it to play. You need it to play. Your team is reeling. You're the best player on the team. They desperately needed you, and you choose to sit out, and you end up losing at home to the San Antonio Spurs. Inexcusable. And, and again, so like a parent... Um, thinking, do I need to adjust my expectations of my child? I was, I was just deeply disappointed, and it's why then again, I'm so proud of how Zion Williamson came back Sunday night. Uh, what was the final stat line? 29 points, 10 boards, seven assists, five blocks. Three of those blocks coming in the fourth quarter. Very intimidating run by the Suns in the middle of that fourth quarter, only for Zion yeah. to come down, go score, block, score, spiking KD off the backboard. And then in crunch time, pull-up jumpers taking over. The Pelicans have had a lot of trouble in crunch time, and it's because for whatever reason, they get away from Zion. Zion said, no more, give me the ball, and let me keep those top six seed hopes alive. So, I'm not saying that it gets rid of all the disappointment, but it would have been a full woe is me uh, had you not had that excellent performance yesterday. So we actually, gosh, I don't even know what day it was because it was spring break, but we went to the Magic game. Uh, shout wow. out to Moscona. He had all of us, all like all the Hesters, and um, had us nice. there wow. in the Smoothie King Center. So he, we had a great time. Obviously, the game didn't go the way that we wanted it to go, but like going back to Zion, he was so frustrated, T-Bob, because they were hacking him, they were pushing him, and like he just wasn't getting any call. He actually got a T in the game, and obviously we know that's not his personality, but he was just he was sick and tired of not getting the calls, and that game ended up with three Pelicans getting ejected at the end of it because the ref thought everyone was there to see him that night inside the blender, <laughs> not the players on the court. It was going but, around this weekend. But there was like a frustration that I've never really seen from Zion because it is wild that the NBA still doesn't know how to ref Zion. Just because he does have muscles, because he's not a twig, does not mean that you just allow people to hack at him like they do. And there was a frustration. When he got that tee, he kind of sat for a long time. And I just I wonder how much of that carried over into him missing the Spurs game. Like, yeah. Was there something that Willie Green saw and said, you know what? probably thought that they could beat the Spurs without him. And he's like, I don't know if he decided to sit him down or, or what the situation was, because it was odd that he missed with a bruised finger. Because you Especially go back when you to come the, back Sunday night and yeah, do what you just exactly. Did, right? So you go to the Magic game and how that ended, he gets the technical there. Like, I just wonder how much of that played into the, hey, let's sit him, because obviously we're going to need him for the stretch run here, and maybe we can steal one from the Spurs. Um, so, I mean, again, but, but a good, a good recovery, a good recovery from the Pelicans, keeping the top six hopes alive. And I like what I'm hearing out of Zion in terms of sitting down with Willie Green and Willie basically telling him, look, you're the man one game at a time. This is the most important part of the season. Go to you, go take over. Also do that hit up that, that pull up jumper, dude, that pull up jumper. If he, if he can get that thing down consistently, choo, my boy. My boy, my, uh, yeah, he's going to expand. Yeah, referees, though, early weekend loser here. 
whether it's the Mississippi State series and it was like the LSU South Carolina debacle on steroids, you had the moving screen call at the end of uh, oh. UConn Iowa that was just lame AF. Uh, yeah, I am not not a not a fan. Uh, not 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 a great weekend for the uh, for the ump shows. Um, I love the meme. The guy looking in the mirror, like you get in there and make it about you. <laughs> There's a lot of that going on this weekend. All right. When we get back, uh, let's dive more into like the, the actual uh, baseball team. What went wrong? What needs to get fixed? Keep it locked right here on Off the Bench. Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. CentralPlumbing.org, CentralPlumbing.org, 925-8552, 925-8552. CentralPlumbing.org. Okay, 24-7 emergency service. Uh, week in, week to holiday, does not matter. Central Plumbing is there for you. Uh, but it's not just repairs. If you want a bathroom remodel, maybe you want a tankless water heater. You got a bunch of people and you don't want to run out of hot water. Well, guess what? Central Plumbing does that as well. Um, so trust the guys that can do it all, solve it all, because they've seen it all. CentralPlumbing.org, 925-8552, CentralPlumbing.org. On that website, you can see what T-Bot is talking about. If you want to go to Bathroom Remodel right there on the homepage. Also, if you want to click on Water Heaters, scroll down to Tankless Water Heaters and never run out of hot water again. And why is that important? Well, if you're getting home late from the ball field or dance or whatever it might be, you still got to do laundry, dishes, still got to shower up. Well, it's okay because you'll never run out of hot water. You can do all those things right then and there, centralplumbing.org. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. Bayou Ford has the new inventory to get you in a new Ford truck or SUV today or customize your next vehicle just the way you want. All new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile powertrain warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. a mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further like vans customized for work or play with safety and tech to keep you connected supported by a five-star sales service and finance team and backed by the one star you know so go the extra mile it's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there mercedes-benz vans Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work, creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a... 
Carl Sanders, join us for the Monday edition of Live at Lunch from Walk-Ons in Brule. We'll take a look back at the weekend in the Final Four and LSU series with Vanderbilt. Live at Lunch, 11 a.m. Monday from Walk-Ons in Brule on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Uh, Laura says LSU's outdated college baseball state, or is LSU's outdated baseball state the reason for their poor performance? Uh, no. But, I mean, you know, it, it does get a little, and this was maybe, even though I thought the Maneri interview was absolutely fantastic, this was a little ridiculous. Um, sometimes the coverage of LSU and the culture around baseball can be a, a, like almost masturbatory. I mean, just every other question about how much people, you know, people just really care on these parts. But then you look at Thursday and like not that many people are there. And it's not loud. And it's not that intimidating. And you look around at the dude and we mentioned Arkansas and everybody's got like their 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 pitcher beer you know like pitcher of beer caps that they're putting on when the bases yeah. gets loaded and everything the vibes are okay I would say but you are losing um you are starting to and I, I don't know how you recover it exactly because yeah, I, I was gonna I, ask I, like I, I don't what do you know. think the solutions are I don't know because I don't think it's just the physical makeup of the stadium right I I, I don't know what what it is is it is it an older fan base like I I I I don't exactly know how what what these steps to take would be but yes you still lead in raw numbers and and all these things by the end of the year I don't know if it's actual attendance or paid attendance but you you generally continue to lead the country every year um but I don't think anybody's going to say that your vibes are on the level right now of like a dude or or Arkansas, or, or um, I mean, I haven't been to Oxford since they've been struggling as much, but the beer showers and everything. So that's something that needs to be looked at. Absolutely not the reason for the um, for the struggles, but I think it's something that we need to be a bit more honest with ourselves about. Because, again, during that interview, which was fantastic, the only thing that I was kind of like, okay, guys, come on, was so many questions just revolved around, like, how much people care, and and that's true, but also, like, it's 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 not always translating into the intimidation factor into the stadium that you would hope for. It's been rare this season, especially where you felt like you've really made it hard on the opponent, whereas we've seen the other teams make it hard on our guys in their stadiums. Yeah, and you're wondering like, what can LSU do? Is it because of the way that the stadium was put together? Is it because where the students are in right field and they're as far away from the opponent as they possibly could be, like? Tennessee, they're right there yeah, they're at on top the dugout. <laughs> I mean, they're, you know, it's intimidating. And we've talked about this for the PMAC as well, like where you put the student section. Um, you know, they talked about it on the broadcast, and, and so, like, people from the outside are starting to notice what we've talked about for really the last you, couple you of years. You could tell they almost didn't want to utter it when they yeah. talked about some of the attendance on Thursday night and even Friday, but they were kind of like, eh. No, a what bit surprise. To yeah, 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 yeah. It was, it was, it was almost like they were, they were, they, they, they want to say like, look, I don't, I don't know, I'm just, just thinking, just, just pointing out. Um, but let's get into uh, the team itself then, uh, because let, let's try to explore why we think this, this team is not good. And Alondra, I know you coming to Jay Johnson town. I lost the sound sheet you gave me. Okay. Um. So I need, and by I lost me, I left in my office. You got it right there. Okay. Thank you. Um. Because. The pitching depth right now is shockingly, I think, maybe the biggest problem with this team. Uh, we mentioned day three. It remains an unmitigated disaster. And uh, again, partially, it's because you're going against the best teams in the SEC. Um, but also, you have guys that have regressed or have not yet lived up the potential that we thought. And you combine that with a pitching change, uh, pitching coach change, excuse me. Yep. And, and look, I I don't think everyone, who, if, if you're like super down on Yeski, I don't think that's 100% accurate. But you're probably not 100% off the mark either. And it may have left, I was thinking about this this weekend, Jake, it may have less to do with Yeski and just more to do with Wes Johnson. Somebody who was incredible in the big leagues. Remember when he broke down his resume, what he right. did with the Twins, what yep. he had that staff doing, his college resume. Now now Georgia's been pretty good here thus far with, with, with him in charge. So... There's a lot of elements in play there, but I love this answer from um, from Jay Johnson. Uh, this is going to be six here, Alondra, if it's one I'm thinking of. 
And it shows just kind of the interconnected nature of the struggles and how LSU as a team is fi- are kind of finding ways to not win these weekend series. Well, I mean, let's let's talk about that. I mean, and that was one thing I just told them too. Like, let's go back to Thursday night. We're winning nine to zero, and we made an error which forced us to bring him in the game. If we don't have to bring him in the game, he's finishing that game last night, and I feel pretty good about our chances to win that game. So it's it's it is what it is. It wasn't the no shot after. Last weekend, was I going to lose Thursday night's game with my best pitcher just sitting around twiddling his thumbs? But it cost us. It cost us big. And nobody will will pick up on that, but that's a very real thing. And uh, my opinion is we should have somebody else that you can go to. And right now we don't. And that's uh, there's a lot of um, reasons for that. And am I surprised about that? I'm really surprised about that. I will tell you I'm surprised about that. I think that's a pretty fascinating answer, man, on multiple levels. So, of course, he's talking about having to use Griffin Herring on Thursday, yeah. which uh, we saw Michael Braswell in game three end up getting subbed at shortstop. The defense just, I mean, even though his bat's been great, the defense remains awful and awful in big moments, whether it's the 10th inning against Arkansas, the 6th uh, against Vandy on Thursday, which ends up kind of setting off the chain of events where you have to use Herring, who's been unreal dominant yeah. in SEC play. And then... That last part of the answer, right? Because I thought Ackenhausen had it, right? And Ackenhausen has felt like the guy at times this year, and then he ends up giving up the home run. But that last part about, like, am I surprised by that? Like, why we don't have another guy? Yes. And to me, that feels like disappointment in the sta- disappointment in, in the staff, the players, and disappointment in the coaching staff that, that you haven't been able to find other answers there. Yeah, because you certainly had the guys that you thought and the talent that you thought you were going to have to be able to come in out of the bullpen and shut a team down. And you just, you haven't had that. And hearing your coach say, like, I knew that we absolutely had to get Thursday. Yeah. Like, I had to bring him in because of the situation. That is shocking. It's shocking to me, shocking to you, it's shocking to our listeners, and it's certainly shocking to Jay Johnson because of all the talent that you have, and you still have it, but you just thought they were going to be more effective. And if you only have right now one arm that you truly trust, and Ackenhausen probably falls into that as well because he left him in even after the home run. Like, he probably falls in that. We know he's had big moments. Um, well, he may not be the most dominant, but he's definitely your number two bullpen arm yeah, still, right? right? Because as you sit here, T-Bob, and you, and you go through the stats, like, I'll be honest with you, like, Will Helmers has pitched way more than I thought he would, and he's actually been effective. But that's not somebody that I had coming in in high leverage situations just because no. he hasn't in his LSU career. And his LSU career has been it's been a wild one. I mean, he played third base when he first got here. Oh, I forgot about that. Wow, that opening day back yes. in the day. That was that but, was an odd one. Like you thought Christian Little was going to to take another step and he hasn't. You thought Cam Johnson would be maybe more ready to pitch yeah. in high leverage situations and he hasn't. I mean, there, there's a couple of guys and I mean, you we still could go down. you just I could still sit here and just cry about Chase Shores. You still had yep. Chase Shores. He was so good. He was so so good when we had him and then he ends up uh, you know, getting the old UCL. Yeah. And that's kind of all she wrote in that regard. I mean, but when no, you I mean, look there, up- there's plenty of like elements like you said, guys that either haven't lived up, have regressed got injured. There's a ton of different yeah. elements in play, but but also like it, Johnson's still surprised. Like even even knowing that like what what is maybe happening in certain situations, still surprised they don't have more. I mean, he feels like he's recruited better than that. You look up and and Jaden Newt was in the game and again, like we haven't seen him. Yeah. But you're trying now. You're at the point where T you're just like, "Hey, I mean, you're here at LSU, so you you can be a player. We weren't counting on you, but now we got to try something." Because you you keep looking down there at the bullpen, and I mean, do you feel confident in anybody outside of the two lefties that we're talking about? Like, I still feel pretty confident in Ackenhaus, and I know he gave up the home run, but at least you know, yeah, I feel good about Ackenhaus. You know what he did against Florida, and he got the third strike. It just was an unfortunate play. But outside of that, who do you feel confident about right now? Yeah, no, I mean, no, that's, yeah, that's, that's kind of Johnson's entire point there. And, I mean, and he finds it to be shocking. And then you're trying, like, and then Gavin Gidry's somebody that, like, obviously you've seen him as well. And then, like, you fall into that situation, T, like, do we save him maybe for the highest leverage situations? Do we go ahead and burn him and bring him in now? Like, there's just not a lot of faith 
and you try to play the matchups, but it's like at this point, you don't even feel like you probably can play the matchups because you're like, we got to get out. Well, and then like, what's happened to Thatcher Hurt after 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 you after you finished so strong last year? How did it all go so wrong? Especially when you had a good enough fall to get the first shot at being the yeah. Friday night guy. Yeah. Right. So like, it it wasn't just like the regression didn't start to happen until the season started for whatever reason. Um, Patrick V says baseball is kind of depressing at the moment. Yeah, never forget. Uh, what, what determines the feeling you have about the team is not the results themselves, but it's where the results land in relation to your expectations. And I, this is one of the most missed expectation starts to a season uh, that I can remember. Actually, I was going to say in a long time, but probably since like 2020 LSU football where you're coming off a natty and we had spent all off season explaining away why you were still going to be good only to come out and be pretty bad. And, and, um, and so the frustration is real, but again, this is where you see who has the balls. This is where you see who's going to stand up. Who's going to fight. Who's not going to be cowed or intimidated. Who's not going to be sad and feeling bad for themselves. Who's not going to be hang dog trudging around like Mopey or Dopey or Eeyore, okay? I want some people with some fire in their belly. And that, that that's what I got to see. Who's going to step up on the mound? Who's going to who, who's gonna start making plays defensively? I mean, Tommy White's out there fighting. I mean, the fact that you wasted that two home run performance on Friday is so freaking disappointing. But um, I'm still I'm still banking on this team, figuring it out, so we're get, getting... getting Better. Better. I mean, you gotta make the tournament. You gotta make the tournament. I think they will. I don't know. We'll see. Um, all right, I still I still have more thoughts on the baseball team. Uh, when we get back, maybe we get to those, get to your comments in the Bayou Ford YouTube chat, youtube.com slash one oh four five years been. Hey, we're now on WBTR as well, channel nineteen. So if you want to see us on television, you can do so. Uh more OTB coming up next. Off the bench with Hester and T Bob. All-Star Toyota Baton Rouge.com. All-Star Toyota Baton Rouge.com. All-Star Toyota. Go in there today if you need a new vehicle, whether it's a uh, new vehicle or a Toyota certified used vehicle, you still get warranty. Maybe you just need a rent. Get cheaper per day rental price for traditional rental companies. You can check out the selection online at All-Star or you can just go see them off of Airline in Goodwood and go deal with the incredible sales team over there. They're going to find you an answer. I've gone in with just a number before and say, hey, man, Budget-wise, this is what I can afford. And then they found me exactly what me and my family needed. Um, so, look, take advantage today. They're right there. All-Star Toyota of Baton Rouge. Yeah, when you go to the website, you will see that they've got something for every lifestyle. Like, no matter what you need. You need something bigger, smaller, better on gas, mileage. If you need a truck, they got multiple options there as well. Something literally for everyone that's buying new, that's also leasing, and that's also renting. You're not going to find that anywhere else. Everything is available. That full fleet is ready to go. Check it out online, allstartoyotaofbatonrouge.com. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking $22,500 off the new 23 Ram 1500 SCA truck. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking $22,500 off the new Ram 1500 truck. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime. Our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. 
They also offer commercial properties, so retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine at sunequip.com. Join me for a Monday edition of the Hunt Palmer Show presented by Gulf Coast Office Products. Getting you ready for the national championship game in college basketball and reacting to LSU and Vandy in baseball. Hunt Palmer Show, one to three weekdays, 104.5 ESPN, Baton Rouge. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Yo, what's happening, y'all? Welcome back, OTB. Ron says, it's been slow play in the outfield. No effort. No one believes they can win, so they aren't fighting for it. Time to take older guys out. Put in the freshmen who they can do. Get ready for next year. This team quits way too easy. Um, I, I I think that's maybe a bit reactive, but I think those sentiments are probably also echoed by many. And in terms of finding answers, yeah, yeah, you you do have to start to uh to to look around. Who'd they put? Um, Larson was pretty good the other night too. Colton Spastic. He's been actually. Point. I mean, not just this weekend. I mean, he's had yeah. a couple of flashes. Uh, who'd they put in a shortstop? Ryan Kucherak. Mm-hmm. What did, um, what did Jay say? When, when are we gonna... Actually, okay, let's get to two more Jay answers and we're going to move on. We're going to move on from baseball. You said, you said, I'm uh, like, what? Like, cause I'm going to be full disclosure. Mm-hmm. Like I had heard that name maybe one time. No idea who he is. One really? time He's before. Played before, a little bit, and, yeah, a little, a little. Bit. He, but he a has. Little, but I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna put T. Bob out there by himself. I saw him go in. I'm like, there's something there, but I got to move the cobwebs. Um, here's what Jay Johnson had to say on whether or not Kutrex the answer at shortstop. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> we'll see. I mean, I thought he competed hard in, in the one two strike at bat. I thought he looked as comfortable against Holton as anybody else did. I mean, because he mowed through us, um, you know. So, I mean, I like how he's worked. And, um, you know, there's a couple guys on the team I wish, you know, we would have gotten more time for to this point. He would be up there. There's a couple other guys I feel that way about. And, um, you know, we'll see. Um, and then finally, here's uh, the Johnson 5 on whether the pitching's been disappointing. I think just the overall execution. I mean, it just seems like, like I said, we can't put anybody away with two strikes and we can't get off the field with two outs. And, I mean, there's a lot more that, that leads to that, but I'll just simplify it to that right now. Uh, right. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're not, not a single scoreless inning in game three. And then to me, Saturday, Friday, one of the things that was so disappointing Friday was you kept, like, again, Vanderbilt staff's very good. You kept finding ways to score, which was great. Uh, but you would almost every single time immediately allow them to answer back. And almost every single time they answered back, Jake, it was with runners that as soon as they reached first just got to do what they wanted. 
Yeah. I mean, just and, and again, I don't know the game well enough um, just watching it to discern how much it's on the catcher, how much is on the pitcher. It certainly felt like a mixture. Like Brady Neal seemed to be kind of kicking balls all over the place. That said, there were some bases where I, I don't think Neal had a chance. But for 90% of the time, it felt like they were running. You weren't even getting a throw down. It was just, it was, it was, it just, it just felt so, you, you just looked uh, so passive yeah. uh, in the face of that aggression. Like you were just taking it, just rolling over. Uh, and, and that, that was one of the most disappointing uh, parts of the weekend to me, certainly. And it's, I mean, Arkansas game, I guess was different, but it's kind of been a theme. And again, I know we've mentioned it a couple of times, just at the end of these series, when you still have a chance, like Mississippi State, Florida, and now this Vanderbilt series, like you still have a chance. It's a freaking rubber match, dude. Yeah, I mean, even Arkansas, Drop like just nuts. going to get one there would have felt completely different. Yeah. And so like that is troublesome. And you can hear it in Jay's voice. Like what's going on here? Like, hey, you know, we still have to fight just because it was disappointing Last game, and we wanted to win it, we had opportunities, doesn't mean that you just wave the white flag here in game number three of the series. Uh, Taylor, what is the what are the uh, what's the scoring differential in game threes of the four SEC series thus far? Uh, 47 to 15. <laughs> the worst part about that is, think about it, that's over 11 runs a game in game threes. Jeez, um, dude. And that's three run rules. Yeah, right? yeah, three of the four. Yeah, rolls. and the only game you didn't get run ruled was Arkansas, and you got swept in that series, so it doesn't yeah. really matter. That, that's bad math. That, that's 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 rough to um, that's very rough to come to grips yeah. with. Yeah, and there's a lot of different things you could point to, but you you start to look at the bullpen, which we talked about last segment. You know, Justin Lore, six six four six ERA. That's your hurry, six five nine. Buckingham six seven five, Ackenhausen six seven five, um, Christian Little nine seven five, Cam Johnson twelve. Yeah, your team ERA for SEC plays like seven four seven. I'm pretty sure. Um, and if I'm off, I'm only off by like a tenth yeah. of a run or two. It's 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 in the mid sevens, mid to high sevens. Um, is this somebody told me this yesterday, and I forgot to fact check it. I couldn't find it anywhere. But is this the first time in LSU baseball history they've lost? Uh, the first four SEC series in a row, or at least, or at least maybe, um, maybe since you've been good in the nineties, I would almost imagine assuredly it probably would be. I'll go yell at hunt during the next commercial break. I was about to text Todd. Uh, Patrick B <laughs> says hard to say we're being reactive when you hear that stat. Yuck. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I, I've probably said, I, I just look. I'm a firm believer that it's it's never as bad as it looks. It's never as good as it looks. When you, when you really zoom in and look at the fact that you should be better than your record, I think water will find its level a bit. But yes, again, to to go back to my opening point in the beginning of the hour, I've certainly adjusted my overall expectations quite dramatically. I, I just do think this team is going to finish way stronger than they look now. And I'll always bet on Jay Johnson to be able to squeeze whatever blood out of the stones there is to be squizzing. I do wonder if there will, and I know we got a, we're up against the clock, I wonder if there will be not giving up changes because just because you put a younger player in there doesn't mean you're giving up. It just means you're trying something yeah. new, and you have recruited to a level at LSU where you've had number one classes, and you have to trust that recruiting. And you have to say, you know what? The older guy, the guy that we thought was going to get it done is just not getting it done right now. And so maybe, you know, Larson gets way more of a run like he has been recently. And, hey, Paxton Kling, we appreciate you to this point, but right now you got to take a you know, you got to take a seat. And your defense is great, and, that, and that's great, but right now we need a, a complete player, and you just aren't giving us that option right now. And that, those are tough conversations. And, T-Bob, you and I have been a part of those conversations. We've seen our buddies that we've played with be a part of those conversations, and it doesn't mean that you can't come back. Mm -hmm. Hell, you can come back three games from now. You never know. you yeah. got to be ready to go. But right now, for this team, we just need to try something new and different because what we've tried and we've rolled out there for the last four weekends hasn't been enough. And he's going to keep trying. It just becomes one of those situations where the answer is not maybe necessarily there, right? I mean, there's a reason in theory why these guys are playing over the other guys, but – only time but again, that's when tell. you, and that's where you, but that's where you have to trust your recruiting, and you have a number one recruiting class, and you've been letting the older guys play because they've earned that right, and maybe they've shown you more, 
but you have to trust in the talent. And I'm not saying that Jake Brown or anybody that is probably going to get more of a run here is going to do better. But you're at a point where you have to at least try. All right, more. OT, by the way, Musso said it's first time they ever lost four series in a row, so we'll say that's fact. Uh, more yeah. OTB coming up next. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. Go to Coleman Roofing and Construction, ColemanRoof.com. ColemanRoof.com. You want Louisiana's most reliable, most respected, and most complete roof and company? You want Coleman Roof. They do any size job, commercial or residential. Uh, any type of roof that you need. They they, they have certified uh, installers for every major brand and type. Um, they do any job geographically throughout the state or the entire Gulf South region. And they also do the interior construction okay a literal one-stop shop how about this uh nidia gardner saying uh, from start to finish my experience with coleman Rubin was top tier the office staff was helpful and the on-site manager ensured everything went smoothly the new roof looked splendid and they left no mess behind coleman Rubin, check out. when you go to that website you'll also see the construction services and t-bob tells you about it all the time it is truly a one-stop shop sure residential commercial any roofing need that you have but also they can have that construction needs met as well colemanroof.com in times of need get a full list of phone numbers websites and other important emergency information on the demco stormwatch page at 1045espn.com there it is the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further like vans customized for work or play with safety and tech to keep you connected supported by a five-star sales service and finance team and backed by the one star you know so go the extra mile it's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there mercedes-benz vans your next project with John Deere deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine at sunequip.com. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985 985- Moscona inviting you to join us for Monday's AFR, presented by Relief Windows. Media gets full access to LSU's scrimmage. We'll have a full recap on Monday's AFR. 3 to 6, 104.5 ESPN, Baton Rouge.
All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. So, y'all, welcome back. So, uh, South Carolina, crowned national champs over the weekend, uh, beat Iowa. There's been a b- bunch of interesting narratives surrounding this. Um, one, one, the one that I kind of, uh, well, first off, look, let's be clear about South Carolina. The most surprising thing to me is not that they won national championship this year. It's that they didn't win it last year. Since the start of the 21, 22 season, this might be one of those amazing stats I've ever seen, Jake. South Carolina is 109 and three. Mm-hmm. And that includes winning the natty in 22 and 24. They lost their entire starting five from last season. And then they go 38. No, they get revenge on the team that beat them in the tournament last year in the national championship. And they beat the best player in these sports history. So South Carolina is incredible. The other thing is some people seem upset over like the Caitlin Clark coverage, like people going out of their way to like, like glaze her over her or like praise her. And the thing is, well, yeah, I mean, I understand that, right? She's the highest score we've ever seen, and offense is always the most exciting. She's the best offensive player we've ever seen. Um, she feels different in terms of a kid who came up in this more modern shooting setting of basketball and and is kind of like a light of what women's basketball can become as she inspires others. She smashed through whatever glass ceilings there were on women's basketball ratings. Like, it's, it's, it's not – is it over-the-top adoration? Yeah, absolutely, but it's, like, not hard to see why to me. Yeah. And I don't understand people getting frustrated about it. No, I mean, it's not hard to see. And you have someone that is maybe the best that we've ever seen. And you're seeing her do things that we've never really seen. And you're just there, there's a lot of factors that play into why they would do that. And some of the most watched basketball games ever, men's, women's, doesn't matter, have involved her. Wasn't, uh, wasn't uh, Iowa-UConn the most watched non-football event that ESPN's ever, ever have had, ever ever full stop was about 17 milli yeah um for reference like a uh, a uh, uh, a Tennessee Alabama night game will do like 10 to 12 yeah so yeah it's insane the impact she had but again credit to Dawn Staley in South Carolina 109 and 3 and beat the defending national champs yeah. twice this season Went through the team that got him last year in Iowa and went undefeated. It's it's pretty incredible, dude. Uh, we still got to talk about John Calipari as well. That's insane. Uh, football scrimmage. A lot more to get to in hour two of OTB. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. Pinnacle Exterior Construction, PECbuilt.com. PECbuilt.com. You need, uh, look, fences, pergolas, bulkheads, any outdoor living space like kitchen or something. Go to PCBelt.com. Look at the gallery. You're going to be blown away, guys. But how about pools? Okay. You want a spec pool? You choose from a, a, a variety of templates. Then there's a bunch of detail options that you get to choose around the edge of the template. So you create a pool that is yours. And uh, in just two weeks, you're going to have the pool of your dreams. This comes from R. Ricardo saying, very pleased. Recently had a beautiful pole installed by Pinnacle, received excellent service. They kept things clean, organized during the whole process, easy to work with and available for our questions and concerns. The team members were always very kind and respectful. Overall, we had a great experience and would recommend Pinnacle to anyone considering a pool. So beat the heat this summer with a pool built by Pinnacle Exterior Construction. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance. With the latest in office technology, from desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products.
the best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared toward seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Good morning. It's 8 a.m. on Monday, April 8th. Today in Baton Rouge, you can expect rainy skies with a high of 76. In hour two of today's show, we'll talk some LSU football along with a little bit of New Orleans Saints. You can follow us on Twitter or Instagram at OTB underscore ESPN and watch us on YouTube at the 104.5 ESPN channel. Hour number two of Off the Bench, live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge studios, starts now. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Jacob Hester and T-Bob Hebert. Yeah, 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 yeah! Off the Bench, bench with Hester and T-Bob. Hey, T, said I gotta come off the bench. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Yo, yo, yo. Hello! And welcome in hour number two of OTB. <laughs> 2024. Happy New Year, guys. April 8, 2024. Um, who had it on their 2024 bingo card that the Arkansas Razorbacks would poach John Calipari from the Kentucky Wildcats, dude? That's actually insane. And... I get that, uh, what is it, five or six years in a row, the Wildcats have failed to make the Sweet 16. Yeah. And so you're going to get a lot of good riddance from Kentucky fans, but they didn't expect to go down like this, you know? they didn't, and, and honestly, if you're Calipari, uh, what better way? Like, you kind of know these people want to break up with you. They want to dump you, uh, but you don't... Uh, but but whatever, like you were you you had enough where they they basically were not able to right. But the relationship is definitely getting a bit rocky. Well, how good does it feel to then take the initiative? Oh, you were thinking about breaking up with me? Yeah. Oh well, jokes on you. Uh, sorry guys, I'm out. Okay, go find a coach. Good luck. And if you're an Arkansas fan, you got to be ecstatic. So I I have uh one of the one of the neighbors is is a big Arkansas guy, and I, you know when when I was talking to him about Musselman. He's talking about how, yeah, Musselman just burned bridges left and right. Like, he's been trying to get a job out of Arkansas for like a couple of years now. And so Arkansas fans, I thought it was just Cope, but they were very much like, 
get the hell out of here. We we don't care. Go to USC, whatever. Right. Um. So when that happens, though, I'm like, okay, great. Well, like, I understand feeling that way, but, like, how are you going to get a better coach? Maybe you wait. That'd be pretty exciting, but, like, that sucks. But then you get Calipari, and all of a sudden, if you're an Arkansas fan, dude, you're a cloud nine. You won. You won the offseason. You upgraded in a year. And do you know how rare that is to upgrade in a year in which a very good coach leaves you for a bigger job? Or, or, well, I shouldn't say a bigger job. I don't know if USC is a bigger job. But for what is maybe, you know, whatever. The good coach left you. You never upgrade in that situation. But you know what Arkansas has? Money. And just like the transfer portal. And desire and want to yes. in that sport. And just like the transfer portal and NIL. Uh, John Calipari entered the portal, and Arkansas had a hell of an NIL deal waiting on him in the form of a ton of boneless chicken Tyson breasts. As apparently it frozen. was the uh, yes, frozen always. Yeah. God, I ate so much frozen chicken, uh, frozen Tyson chicken in college, dude. Oh, he's just microwave that. And I can eat that rubbery, microwave. genetically modified mass. I can mm. smell my guys, Luke Sanders and Craig Stelts, on the George Foreman grill. Hell yeah. Oh, Frozen wow, they're chicken fancy. bread. Oh, yeah. They're fancy boys. Uh, every single night, I think, in WCA. I would put like craft singles on a tortilla and then Nobody microwave Tyson chicken and just. You're microwaving. The microwaving the is what's yeah. killing yeah. me right yeah. now. Like, this is. Put some teriyaki to get the frozen Allie's teriyaki. Are you sure oven. that it was all the way done? So I'm basically responsible. And then the craft. Yeah, on bro, it. there's oh, microwave God. instructions on the back. Is yeah, really? as long as you follow 100%. the instructions, you're probably okay. Yeah. So you got like the pre cooked then? Um, I don't know. That well, shouldn't be There an can option. be frozen pre cooked, or there can just be. Yeah, uh, I'm imagining they're frozen yeah, pre cooked. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you're for microwaving, sure. for yeah. sure. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's, it's not a raw uh, slab of chicken going in. Yeah. And then yeah, microwaving. It's pre cooked. It's already out. breaded. Yes. They just refroze well, it. It wasn't breaded. It wasn't breaded. Yeah, yeah. It's got the grill marks on it. Yeah, relax. It wasn't bread. Um, trying to eat healthy, dude. Uh, but yeah, so I basically, my college me is responsible for John Calipari now being in Arkansas because apparently it is the main Tyson chicken guy that's tight with Cal. I was like, look, we going to pay the hell out of you. Come on down. Big time if you're an Arkansas fan. After the disappointment of football between baseball and basketball and after an awful basketball season, this kind of immediately kind of now you're like the off season's awesome. You're like, oh, okay, cool. Who cares? You know, you were bad last year. Okay, that's fine. We now have John Calipari, and 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 I know people say, oh well, is Cal any good anymore? But I think that sometimes Jake, with a guy like that, a fresh start, he's going to be reignited. You know, like I think I think he's going to be pretty damn good over there. He's going to have everything at his disposal. Like he's not going to want for anything. There's going to be complete buy, and you could say, well, same thing in Kentucky, but there was some of the fan base and donors that were ready to do something different and they had stepped kind of away from the program a little bit. And so he is going to have every opportunity in the NIL space to go get whatever player that he wants. Truly, yeah. like whatever yeah. player that he yeah. wants, yeah. They, they, hey, here, go get him. And he brings like a cool factor, kind of a level of legitimacy with him yeah. that is, is, is really hard to achieve because of his resume. We'll probably see Drake rocking Razorback gear sometime soon here. Um, Will he change his model, though? Because he's been, obviously, high school recruiting, one and done. He's tried the older transfer portal. She way was somebody who was you know player of the year. He was a transfer coming over, I believe, from West Virginia. He's tried that, and so he's gone back to the one and done. I don't know at Arkansas. I think it probably behoove you to go get – an older player out of the portal, spend some money because high school recruiting might, because those, those players have already decided where they're going Yeah, for the most part. So maybe you start that process down the road, but for this season, I would do a deep dive into the portal. Oh uh, yeah. It might as well be called the Arkansas Tamperbacks because they about to be sending some feelers out there, man. Uh, Cal's going to leave no relationship stone unturned when it comes to getting the message out there that we are open for business and we got money to spend. Um, Taylor, you're, you're probably right behind Jake. You're probably the biggest college basketball fan in the room. Uh, this was one of those rumors to me, uh, uh, a neophyte, where when I saw it, I, I I like triple checked all the accounts, right? Like, are these real? Is this a real account? And then, damn, sure enough, dude. What do you think about it? Uh, I think it's a great move for Arkansas. And y'all were talking just a second ago about, hey, he's going to have to dive into the transfer portal. 
We listened to him after he lost to Oakland. This plays actually right into what Calipari was talking about because for a while you're like, oh, he's too young on his team. He went with the one and dones For a while that yeah. worked for him. That's that's not really what's working now in college basketball. He doesn't have that option now. He's going to have to dive into the portal and get some experience. I think that's going to help him year one because that's exactly what he was not doing in Kentucky. That he talked about, hey, I need a change here. So, I mean, I, I think it plays kind of right Ar- where he's at. Ar- Arkansas is a setting. Is prob- maybe I'm wrong here. Maybe Cal proves me wrong here. Uh, he'll get big recruits, so he's going to be wrong. But it does feel like a school that's maybe less attractive to the NBA one and done guys than was the brand and the setting of Kentucky. Well, you don't you don't see a ton. I mean, think about when, when were they really good? I mean, they had they had Michael Qualls and Bobby Portis. But I mean, outside of that team, you've had four to five year guys on that team that yeah. just come through and they're and they're excellent. So yeah, they they've never been that. So when you look at what Cal had coming to Lexington, top one hundred recruits. 14, 15, 24, 39, 46, and 71. Now, when you look at 14 and 15, they've already signed with Kentucky. You've got 24 who's committed to Kentucky. 39's committed to Kentucky. 46 is signed with Kentucky. Uh, 71's also signed as well. So you have a couple that are still committed. They could easily go to Arkansas. So you bring two players over there. The guys who have signed their national letter of intent, they would be released of that if they wanted to because you have a coaching change there. And so you potentially could bring in, you know, you got six top 100 players. T, let's say you bring in four. Yeah. I mean, that that along with what we're talking about with the transfer portal, being able to open up your pocketbook there, Arkansas could write the ship immediately just because of Coach Cal and who he is and what he means to the basketball world. Who do y'all think Kentucky goes after? Um, I'd go I, Will Wade and Nate Oates or Will Wade. I, I've, I'd I've go seen Will a Wade. lot of people in the chat mention Nate Oates. That I keep thinking of the chain. Call. I keep thinking of the 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 chain effect of, and I hate it, but Oates to Kentucky and then Wade to Alabama. Yeah, that, that's that's possible. But I mean, they motivated Oates Will Wade at Alabama out for blood and revenge, and at that point, a motivated uh, Alabama after maybe having that their guy poached away. I mean, for Nate Oates, it would have to seem pretty attractive to go to Kentucky, right? Or You'd no? have to think so. I mean, Kentucky is a top four job. And, and I'm saying like, and, it's and Duke, again, Carolina, Kansas, Kentucky. We talk about being the biggest show in, in town. I don't care how good you did. Like, it took you making a final four for my Alabama friends to start texting about Alabama basketball. Yeah. Uh, if you go to Kentucky, and maybe you don't want that smoke, but if you go to Kentucky, I mean, year-round, you are the show. I'll tell you this. We went to Kentucky, to Lexington in 2007. We were the number one team in the country coming off a win against Florida. So you would assume that Kentucky football, who was ranked in the top 20 at the time, T-Bob, going against the number one team in the country at home would be the biggest ticket in town, and it, it would be all the hoopla. It wasn't. Midnight Madness was the same night, the night before the oh, game. Wow. That's the only thing that people talked about. We stayed in the hotel that everybody stayed in for Midnight Madness. That's the only thing that Kentucky fans like cared about. Now they went to the game and they were great. I'm not saying they didn't care at all, but the Midnight Madness basketball show was bigger than the number one football team in the country coming to town. That's, I mean, yeah. So I, I'll be interested to see the uh, domino effect, the chain of events that comes out of this uh, this move. But, I mean, it's definitely, again, one of the more shocking stories that I can remember in recent memory to the point where as soon as you see it on Twitter, you're checking all the accounts. Am I, am I, is this a fake blue check mark? Is it? Is this real? Is this confirmed? But damn sure enough, Cal out. Well, Power you, move. You sent it in the group chat, and it was kind of late at night. Yeah. And I, I didn't see it until I woke up in the middle of the night, and I saw it, and I was like, is yeah. this a joke? But it turns out it's not. I was half asleep. No, so I, I mean, was no. Was just, look, I, I was, you know, I don't it, know. It did kind of happen early afternoon. Yeah. And people within the Arkansas program, like, it was it was done early. And then it, I'm surprised how long it took to come out. Um, where is it? Oh, uh, program director says, y'all are vastly overestimating Wade Lamau. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's just from dealing with him firsthand, but I remember being blown away by Wade, the first press conference uh, I ever saw. And then I thought his results at LSU were pretty damn good. 
And I think it's interesting that the one thing that he was kind of hamstrung by is he wanted to pay guys, right? Yes. And now you can. And the the, the turnaround um, at uh, at uh, McNeese's last year was literally the greatest. What what did we say the greatest in NCAA history? Pretty sure it was. I yeah. For a time. Yes. I mean, so I maybe. It was tied. Like I, I guess my point is like I I think you'd be hard pressed to find many more attractive candidates in terms of potential. Yeah. In terms of maybe where the ceiling is. You might have like more safe yes, plays. Right. But in terms of where that ceiling is, Wade feels like he could push it the highest. I, I guess that's my thing. Like does a does a program like Kentucky go after Will Wade? I don't think they will. I think they should. I don't think they will though. I think they're gonna go with a guy where they're like, we know what we're getting. We're gonna go after a Nate Oates or somebody like that. I, I just but think do that, we, like, that like makes do we more do we not know Kentucky. what you're getting with Will Wade? He went to two you know, stepping stone programs in UT Chattanooga and VCU. Mm -hmm. Both good programs that a lot of head coaches have come from. Yeah. And, you know, UT Chattanooga, he's 40 and 25. He gets the VCU job. He's 51 and 20, makes a couple yeah. of NCAA tournaments, wins a game in the tournament. He comes to LSU. He gets LSU to the Sweet 16. He gets him to the second round. His last year, he got him to the tournament. He was 105 and 51 in his time at LSU. And took he took over an awful situation. Terrible. Yeah, awful when they took when and they went to NIT in that first year and then 25 and 5. The next year, fifteen and two in league play. Then he goes to McNeese, and yeah, they got housed by Gonzaga, but Gonzaga's Gonzaga. But you were thirty and four, and so, I mean, he's already proven a lot. He's gotten an SEC team to the Sweet Sixteen in year number two. That he took over a horrible situation. Mm. He's been to the second round in the NCAA tournament two different times with two different teams as well. So I mean, there's a lot on that resume, not just us here saying the old LSU guy. Man. All I know about this is uh, I, want, I, I, I one of the ways I would judge Wade is how would I feel if he was at Alabama, and the answer is awful. I would feel awful. So uh, here's the hoping that does not happen. Um, all right, when we get back, let's talk a little spring football, guys. We had a scrimmage on Saturday. Got some insight into who's running with the ones and the twos and whatnot. Uh, who are your kind of biggest performers, standouts, who are you most concerned about? We'll get into all of this and more next here on OTB. Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Young people, do y'all say LaMau or LMAO if you're saying out loud? I don't say either. You say LMAO. LMAO, yeah. What about you, Lynn? Yeah, I say LMAO. Okay. Well, guess what? There's nothing funny about the deals at All-Star because they're awesome. Um, seriously, awesome. So go check them out at All-Star Toyota Baton Rouge.com today. You start to explore those deals. Uh, remember, though, so you get in an accident, you need a body shop, you need a service center, bring your vehicle into All-Star. All makes and models welcome. Uh, they got the shuttle service. They can drop you off, pick you back up. They got cheap per day rental prices, uh, rental cars right there on site. They got factory parts on site. So what are you waiting for? You get free professional estimate. Bring your vehicle in. If you mentioned OTB, you get $100 towards your deductible. All straight to Baton Rouge. Go to the website today. Buying new, leasing, or renting, everything is available. We talk about it all the time. No matter what you're looking for, they've got multiple options. SUVs, trucks, sedans, hybrids, you name it. They've got it. All Star Toyota of Baton Rouge.com. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. When it comes to ending cancer, we push forward, always working together for you. That's why our cancer experts at Oshner have clinically integrated with MD Anderson Cancer Center. This means advanced cancer care, including access to life-saving clinical trials and integrating care to treat the whole you. Introducing Oshner MD Anderson Cancer Center. Long live you. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking 22500 off the new 23 Ram 1500 SCA truck. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking 22500 off the new Ram 1500 truck. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you.
your next project with John Deere deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine at sunequip.com. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. what old uh, Morgan Walden was doing when he threw that chair out the window this weekend. Well, off, weekend the, off the balcony. Off the balcony. Yeah. Who hasn't thrown a chair from a... You act like you haven't done worse. Yeah. You know, balcony a couple floors yeah. up. Yeah. Probably have. We've all been there. Worse. In the middle of Broadway in Nashville. Yeah. 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 I will... The only thing I'll say for Morgan is that is some rock star stuff. Yeah. You're supposed to at least once in your rock star career completely trash a hotel room to the point where the cops get involved. Now, granted, and you're you also know, supposed to cancel a show because you got so drunk that you couldn't do yes, it. Yes, true. Yeah. yeah. Um, what do you talk about, Alondra? He had a serious voice condition. Yeah, that's yeah. my bad. Hey, have some respect. Trust me, I have one every Monday after whiskey and wine. I understand where you come from, Morgan. It's tough, dude. It's, it's real. I don't know what's going on. It's really tough, though. Um. Also, so y'all don't, none of y'all say Lamont, none of y'all ever type that up. Do you remember the Raffle Copter back in the day? Mm -mm. Raffle, 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 Raffle. No, nothing. All right. Uh, LSU football scrimmage <laughs> on Saturday. What is Raffle? Uh, rolling on the floor laughing. Lamont, do you know what that is? Yeah. Could you, I mean, I knew, yeah. Left my ace out. Yeah. So, and then you got Raffle Lamont. Right. Roll on the floor, laugh my ass off. Yeah, you just, See, roll I just all like, and I, and I know it's not cool. I know like people are like, oh my god, emojis. I just like, like a. Emoji. Oh my god, emojis. Are emojis not cool? Nah, that's what I I've love heard. emojis. Dang. Uh, I love a good emoji. See, to me, emojis have become uh, they they they've broken through to the point where I don't even think about them as emojis. They're just letters. At this point, yeah. like they're so culturally they're acceptable. Part of the text chain. Yes, yeah. they they are just a part of the lexicon. Like like they should just be in Webster's yeah. dictionary at this point. I don't think it's like I remember when they first burst onto the scene. You're like, what are these? How do I install the keyboard? <laughs> Gonna go into settings and then what? Um, yeah, no. Now it's just a uh, codified way of communicating. Really, the ultimate way because you know, let's say you speak Spanish and I don't. Well, guess what? We can still communicate. Thanks to emojis and chess, you know, universal language as well. Uh, so emojis back on? I yeah. was never I didn't off think them. They okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. I don't. I mean, like all things, you know, uh, maybe maybe the youth is moving away, but the youth does not get to decide uh, pop culture as a whole, and so I don't know what the youth is doing in that regard. But the rest of the world is still very much 
involved in some um, emojis. The the new frontier to me, and I'm probably old here, uh, but the new frontier to me is still all of us codifying the reactions to text messages. Um, when you're having a conversation with someone and they thumbs up your message, that's clearly saying that it's at an end, right? Yeah. Yeah. And they yeah, don't yeah, respond. Yeah. yeah. No response. Should you be offended or should no. you take no. that as legitimate thumbs up? No. If you no, said something funny up. and I hit the ha ha, like I thought it was funny. Yeah. But yeah. like it was good. I have no response. Yeah. It was good. Okay. Yeah. Fair. I appreciate fair. The, fair. the message. Fair. It was funny. I want you to know it was funny. But we're good. I think exclamation marks. With that marks, conversation, at least. I think exclamation marks have a couple of uses to me. Yeah. Um, it seems to be, I, I, I was originally using them like, oh, what? Like, whoa, that's crazy. Which I think that still plays. But, it, but, but apparently, I think it's also developed where it's basically if you're agreeing with someone. Um, yeah. Or at least in a lot of my friend groups, that's how it's uh, kind of naturally transitioned to. It, the, the exclamation would be like, yes, I support this opinion. In yeah. this conversation. Yeah, it having. could be like a let's go. Let's get fired up. Yep. Yeah. Yep. True. No doubt. True. Um, I wonder what comes ball. next. I wonder what comes next. Uh, you know what comes next? Accutim of Baton Rouge to your home for all your AC, heating, and electrical needs. If you want to take control of your comfort zone. Uh, guys, it is stunningly gorgeous outside right now. But... You can feel the first tendrils of summer starting to creep in. The gentle caress of Ray Baker as he bathes your skin in UV radiation. What's the best way to beat the heat? A working AC unit. Okay, and at Active, they're gonna make sure that you that you stay good to go. The online reviews are absolutely stunning. They say service to the highest degree, and it's not just talk. They walk the walk. Okay, so have them out to your home today. Active Baton Rouge. ActiveBR.com. ActiveBR.com. Come. Uh, yeah, so LSU spring football uh, scrimmage on Saturday. Uh, before we get into kind of the overall top performers, Taylor, any big scrimmage takeaways from Saturday? Um, P.J. Woodland continues to just a meteoric rise, a corner. I mean, it really looks like him and Ashton Stamps are kind of separating themselves in this cornerback room. And, mm. you know, J.V. and Toviano coming into the spring, you're like, hey, he might be your most talented guy. He's kind of that that rotational piece now. You're number three at the cornerback spot because of how good Woodlands looked. And he's a guy that came in at only about 165, 170 pounds, so he's still got room to grow. So by fall time, I mean, if he keeps this up, he's going to be a heck of a player. Yeah, we talked about Woodland on Friday, Jake, and to me, I kind of love his, uh, his story. Um, Three-star, kind of under-recruited, enrolled early, but I feel like I've met that archetype at defensive back before. In fact, I feel like I met him a couple of times. Or maybe not even just defensive back. Look at somebody like Malik Neighbors, right? Yeah. Somebody who uh, just has that kind of F you drive. Or, okay, you know, I mean, look, I'm out of kind of in here under the radar, but I don't give a damn. I'm out here to fight. I'm out here I'm out, I'm out here to scrap, go make plays. You might get me one, but you ain't going to keep me down. And, and it seems like uh, Woodland has kind of used that tenacity here early on to start to make a name for himself. And you need somebody too. You need somebody yeah. in that room. I think. I think you need all the bodies that you can count on in that room, and then you figure out which ones can actually play. And the good thing about when you have a new staff coming in is it kind of hits reset on everybody. So the players that have established themselves, they have to come and prepare for the off season in a different way, and I think in a good way because you know, hey, my job's not safe. I'm not going to yeah. rest on what I did. A year ago, I've got to come in and act like I'm competing for a job because I kind of am, right? And then the new guys, it's like, hey, we're new here too. We came in together. If you're the best player, I don't care that you're young. You're going to play. Mm -hmm. And so for LSU's defense, because this doesn't happen very often, even if you get a new defensive coordinator sometimes, that's it. But you got new coaches on every single level. Every level. Even if they've been here before, they still they don't know these players for the most part. Right, I mean, Greg Penn, like, sure, he was here with Blake Baker, but there's not a lot of guys that were here the last time Blake Baker or Corey Raymond were here. I mean, you probably spent damn near $6 million. I mean, probably even more when you get to buyouts in terms of yep. probably pushing like $8 million in terms of getting, I mean, making over the staff. So, yes, you heavily, heavily invested in kind of resetting 
uh, and wiping the sweet slate clean on that side of the ball. Yeah. So when you do that, now everybody is going to have the opportunity because again, yeah. like there's very few players that were here the last time that these coaches were there. And so they're starting over. And so they have you no, know, no, no predetermined, Hey, this guy, well, he's, he's kind of been the starter for two years. We're probably going to give him the most opportunity. And as long as he's not terrible, like we'll roll him out. No, it's, there's none of that. And that's not Blake Baker's personality anyways. Like if you know, Blake, but I think for this defense, how bad they were a year ago, and you still have some talent, it was more scheme than talent in a lot of our opinions. Okay, well, now you all get you to go were, there at I the mean, same time. May, it's like whatever talent you had, you were, you were dragging down pretty yes, consistently across the board. Yes, you were putting in bad board. situations. Yes. Um, flipping to the other side of the ball, it seems like, guys, if the hype is to be believed, that we may be looking at the emergence of the next great LSU wide receiver. In Kyron Lacey. And, of course, when you talk about LSU wide receivers, you're talking about a legacy that is quickly becoming unparalleled. Uh, maybe only Ohio State, even in the conversation. Alabama would have had somebody to say the last couple of years. So you're like, that's kind of hurt them in that regard. Yeah. Um, but Kyron Lacey is apparently dominating spring ball. And I thought it was interesting to hear Kelly talk about the fact that, like, he's really seen a shift since he basically became wide receiver one. So that maybe when he was the three at times last year, he could get a little complacent, maybe not focus in as much, but through watching Malik, watching BTJ, how they approach the game, that he seems to have kind of grown and matured in those same ways. And Kyra, I mean, he's always had the physical size. Yeah, It's just been a bit of consistency issue. If he can consistently catch the ball, he could be um, a top five guy in the entire country. And I'm right there with you. And I don't think that's pumping the sunshine. That's just seeing a guy that has had – Moments for sure in yeah. his LSU career where he's been really good. I look at the Alabama game. I look at the Texas A&M game this year. Big moments too. Not like when the game is out of hand. Like big moments when you're still in the game or you're trying to go win the game. And he's had those. But we've also seen we've seen drops. Like there's yeah. no denying that. Like everybody yeah. knows that you've seen some inconsistency as far as catching the football. That's the one thing that if he changed, he he had the ability and he's shown playmaking ability to be a true receiver one at a place like LSU. And so for Brian Kelly to point out some of the things that, you know, focusing and doing mm -hmm. the little things right, like you can tell, like they've noticed it as well. They were just waiting for that to take over. And sometimes it just, for whatever reason, it doesn't happen until you're the guy. Now, sometimes when you become the guy, you can go the complete opposite way. And and you it's too much pressure I, for you. I, I, yeah, that, that is true. Sometimes too much pressure. I think also sometimes if you kind of become the guy to – early or yeah. you become the guy like late in a season then you kind of lose your way almost I mean I mean Keyshawn would be the most recent example of this where yeah. he becomes the guy and then it seems like he kind of yeah I guess he had no case okay, starts the next year that's probably not completely fair but whatever yes yeah, like like Lacey's path is interesting in that it is one where you could kind of see the potential but the door, um, he, 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 he's not already crowned, right? But the yeah. opportunity was laid in front of him, and it looks like he's making the most of that opportunity. I mean, right you now. look at what he did a year ago, 30 catches, 558 yards. Very productive. Led, you know, led the team for those who qualified with 18.6 yards per catch. So neighbors was 17.6, Brian Thomas 17.3. More catches, <laughs> obviously, but still 18.6 for Lacey. He had seven touchdowns as well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, like Brian Thomas led the country with 17, the neighbors had 14, but he had seven touchdowns. And the next closest on the team, there's a big drop, was Hilton with two. Mm -hmm. So there was things he did last year to make you believe that he truly can be that one, but the consistency question is still going to be there until you line up against USC. It's great to see him improving. It's great to see him take over practices. It's even better to hear the head coach talk about all the things that we're talking about. Yeah. Now, when the lights come on, you've made plenty of plays before. Can you do it consistently? Because when it's third and eight, third and nine in Vegas, they're coming to you. They're, yeah. they're not going to neighbors yeah. and Brian Thomas Jr. They're not there anymore. They're coming to you. No, the, I mean, the game plan will be built around highlighting you yes. and trying to find mismatches for you. And you're not going to have uh, Jane Daniels legs to rely on. So in, in, in some other ways, you're even more important than you've ever been. So uh, Kyron Lacey, I love seeing him take advantage of that opportunity early on in the spring portion. And let's see 
if he can now fulfill it when it matters uh, coming into fall. Uh, I have more I want to say on football, but we're going to respect the clock. We're going to go to break. I'm back with more OTB next. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. Community Steel Company, communitysteelco.com. Shout out. Our guys at Community Steel, sponsoring uh, last week in Rocket Country. Super fun. Uh, but look, the bottom line is, man, if you need steel, real steel, you want to go to Community Steel. It's right there in Gonzales, Louisiana. It's got a live and local sales team. You need pearl and tube and sheet metal, steel buildings. You can go see it all, touch it all, feel it all before you buy. And because they go straight from the wholesale to manufacturing everything right there themselves on site, you get the best price. No middleman jacking up the price for the consumer on the back end. It's why they are disrupting the steel industry. Okay? They're changing the game. Be a part of that change. CommunitySteelCo.com. CommunitySteelCo.com. And you know they've already been at work for almost two hours. And so if you want to go stop by and see them in Gonzales, top right corner of the website, click on Community Steel, pull up exactly where they're located. You can go see it for yourself. You can always pick up the phone and give them a call as well. 225-647-2020. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, (laughs) playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire... All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Yo! Welcome back, OTB. Talking a little uh, LSU spring ball. Um, Okay, I'm going to do, so this is an old uh, managerial technique. 
Now, you know, generally with Taylor, I like to just crap on him 24-7. Yeah. Um, some managers will try to send you a posi burger where they tell you something positive, then they get into the negative, and then they finish with something positive. So I'll try to do that here. Okay. Uh, one of the big positives uh, coming out of spring thus far has reportedly been Jacoby and Guillory. And I would ask you all the question, is Jacoby and Guillory arguably, outside of quarterback, just because quarterback's always going to matter the most to any football conversation in any in any way. Is Jacoby Guillory actually the most important member of this football team? That's a great question because not you know, outside of two thousand and seven in Glenn Dorsey, I mm-hmm. don't know that this question would Whatever, ever be yeah, asked. True. <laughs> but true. with what you have currently, now we all know that they are still going to add players at that position. Like, it, it's going to happen. Like, they've already got some that that pretty much are, are, are here. Yeah, They're but it's not going to be, it's not, but, but yes, but it's not going to be anybody overwhelming necessarily. It's it's going to be solid. I think solid's the best that you can get. You're not going to get a superstar to your point, T. So someone who has been here, played a bunch of years in a row, knows the program at that position with what it looks like, it's a fair question to ask. Now, I don't, maybe not the most important, but he's in the top three. So I think you could frame it as, let's not even talk about Guillory's talent quite yet, but just the context of the situation means he is, you know, a, a, a incredibly important to the success of this team. Now, that's why I say I'm starting this as a positive, is reportedly he's been kicking ass in spring. He's been playing yeah. very well. And I mentioned I was talking to LSU strength uh, staff member a couple weeks ago, and I was asking who the strongest guys on the team were. He mentioned Will Campbell, Jacoby, and Guillory. Um, and Jacoby and Guillory just had the conversation about Kyron Lacey having an opportunity in front of him and then having to step through and answer that call. Nobody has more opportunity on this team than does Jacoby and Guillory. Yeah. To finally become the next great LSU defensive tackle. And it appears that thus far, against a very good LSU offensive line, he's been able to do that. It now is. for the negative. Oh, wait, go ahead. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, oof, it, it is going to be a position that you almost want to put in bubble wrap. We understand, like, we understand yes. that. Now, Guillory is a very talented player. Um, maybe didn't hit the ground running like, you, like you'd like you wanted him to, but it, and he sat behind some really good players, some five-star yeah. guys at the position. Mm-hmm. Uh, you go get a transfer that ends up being an All-American in Wingo, but he was a fringe top 100 player coming out yeah, big regardless time. of position. I mean, he came in at 104 on uh, on three. He's massive. This is somebody that has the talent. So this isn't pumping sunshine. He ha- I mean, top 100 players at that position, they don't happen very often. No. And so he has the talent. He's played already a bunch in his LSU career. I mean, he's basically played since he's been here, never really been the guy because you've had Mason Smith and others. But – now is his time, and he's got the ability, and again, bubble wrap. <laughs> well, if he can have like a Christian Lockator type season, and he's going to be required rep-wise to probably do some similar stuff, yeah. then that could be massive for this defense. Um, so now we get to the negative, and this is not to hate on this man, because maybe this man proves me wrong, but I think it's impossible not to be a little disconcerted when you hear that Kimo McAniole is taking first-team reps at defensive tackle. And in case you don't know, Kimo McAniole was an offensive lineman until about a month ago, uh, until right before spring ball. And they switched him over. In fact, um, much to Taylor Chagrin, I don't know if I'm using that correctly, um, at practice a couple of weeks ago, Kimo McAniole sat down for an interview, and for the first, like, five minutes, he was interviewed as an offensive lineman, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, like people he, didn't even remember that he had moved over because like the first couple <laughs> questions are like, "Hey, what's it like working with Nussmeyer? Uh, <laughs> you got Will Campbell and Emory Jones on that O line. How are they becoming leaders?" And he was kind of hinting at it. He's like, "Well, you know, the big leader on the defensive lines, Jacoby and Giller." And then finally, people picked <laughs> up on it. Um, and so that would be, and again, maybe you know, like I would love. I've never seen the O line D line switch really work. Maybe Chemo proves me wrong. I would love to be proven wrong. This is, again, not as much of a slight against chemo as much as it is just against the makeup of the position that you could have a guy transfer a, a month ago and now be taking first-team reps. But now, maybe that, yeah, to go from that side of the ball to the defensive line, but 
I, our national championship team in 07 and your your team in 11, like Lyle Hitt and Carnell Stewart both started their LSU career oh, that works. firmly on the D-line. Well, no, that works a lot, though. But I mean, Joe Barksdale did that. He was awesome. I've just never seen it. I think Will Blackwell, 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 Blackwell became an All-American. Now, the thing is, it shouldn't be that case because, in my opinion, now I'm an offensive player, so probably I'm biased here. There's way more, you know, technical aspects of playing the offensive line than D-line. Yeah, but it's that athleticism, dog. Like, D-line, like... Yeah, it's but not see ball, but, hit ball, but yeah, but it is. But that's the thing: the guys that can't cut it athletically are the guys that end up switching to O line. Are you hating on Will Blackwell's I'm not athletic on Will Blackwell, ability? Dude. I feel like you're taking Chase a shot Pitt, at your boy no, right now. Chase Pittman cursed LSU white defensive lineman for a long time until Christian Lockator broke the curse. Um, but no, it's. I mean, that just is what it is. Like it is. It is. It's O line's much more technique, much more mental. Um, D line is are you a physical freak, and and so I, I just again I, I I see the reverse all the time. I rarely I've never seen the O line D line work out to any great degree. So I hope chemo proves me wrong. I'd say that's a negative. Let's get to our positive burger. Let's finish with a positive. Um, I'm loving the increased hype around uh, Major Burns and Sage Ryan, and that's another thing that we talked about on Friday, Jake. Uh, but Major Burns. Now being able to play in a position that seems to much better fit him in this star role, closer to the ball, almost like a hybrid linebacker sort of field. And now Sage Ryan, for the first time in his career, getting to really play the position that he was recruited to play, yeah. more of like an actual free safety type of role. And 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 what you're hearing is that the returns thus far have been very positive. <laughs> Talking about important players. Yeah. And again, like when we say that, we're not saying that they're the most talented players out there. Now Sage Ryan, I, I do think, has a skill set that – Hasn't been fully tapped yet. That's yep. not what we're saying. But as far as importance, when you look at the deficiencies that you have on that side of the football, and we know them, the coaches know them, everybody knows them, right? The roster is still trying to be built over on that side of the football. Those players, the three players that we're talking about here, are going to be as impactful as any. Yeah. Because yeah. of the numbers, because of how much they've played, and the guys that are going to probably play some are all going to be – probably freshman, but at, at most a sophomore that's got a little bit of playing time. And so because of that, like those players are going to be highly impactful on how your season is up turning out. And so with Major Burns being there and, he, and he's going to play a little bit of a different role, going to play a star position, which I think suits him better. Yeah. And then Sage Ryan, who, you know, tip your cap to him, played corner, even though that's not where he needed to be because he had to and he held his own. Now he gets to be in a position where he can go out there and do what he was brought in to do as a five-star player. So those two guys, and Guillory as well, they're going to be three of the most important players on the team. More OTB, Rabbit of Hour 2 next. Off Ooh, the Elijah. bench with Hester and T-Bob. Slipping. Slipping. A little TikTok. Were, were you doing a Be Real? I don't know what Be Real is. I think it was some social media a few months back that I can't remember. Uh, get Gordon, get it done today. You need somebody who's going to fight for you. Go to getgordon.com or when you get an accident, call 225-888-8888. Whether it's a car accident, Louisiana truck accident, personal injury, offshore accident, maritime injury, workers comp. Gordon is going to get you what you deserve. Don't be bullied by big trucks. Get Gordon, get it done today. All right, uh, getgordon.com is the website, and there you I can find out trucks. what they can do for you in the courtroom, past client results, all that information is right there. If you want to see what they're doing in the community, social media at Get Gordon is always going to be that handle there as well. And we always tell you, like, throughout the state of Louisiana, they're going to be able to help you out. So if you're listening to us in Alexandria, New Orleans, Shreveport, wherever you're listening to us, we are talking to you, your area code in Louisiana, followed by the 8, 888 Get Gordon and get it done. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge.
There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always custom. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Dude, so did y'all see any of this WrestleMania stuff last night? I did um, not. It was I was watching it from afar, just constantly updating Twitter, and it's one of those nights where it makes me sad that I'm not into wrestling full time because you just feel I felt like uh, the the you know Squidward when he's looking outside of his house and SpongeBob and Patrick yeah, having and so much around. fun and running around. Like that's how I felt not being able to watch this live or kind of experience it with any, with the depth of others. But, but even somebody like me who kind of gets wrestling through osmosis and grew up liking it. Yeah. Um, they went full Avengers in game last night. I, I, I don't know if I have this one hundred percent correct because again, this was piecing things together through Twitter highlights, but, um, I, the, the whole weekend, I think, featured like Cody Reigns trying to overcome, or excuse me, Cody Rhodes, Rhodes. trying to overcome Roman Reigns, right? Uh, Roman Reigns been the champion for over a thousand days. I was watching a Roman Reigns entrance and I was like, does he feel like a god at this point? Like, cause I, I think about this with like Egyptian pharaohs all the time, right? Technically, we know they're human, but if you were them, how would you feel human? You would not. You would feel above everybody else because everybody treats you like you are and you can literally lift a finger and have anything happen to you. And then you watch Roman Reigns enter and you watch 80,000 people just be like, just in, in, enthralled by him. And he just lifts up one finger and everybody goes insane. It's like, God, right? Like it, 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 it's fascinating watching um, these people control these giant, massive stadiums. So the whole weekend was all about Cody versus Roman. Uh, but at one point, I don't know who exactly um, was in the reins, but John Cena shows up out of nowhere, beats the crap out of somebody. He ends up F. So John Cena ends up F fiving Roman Reigns. Then uh, you get John Cena and The Rock squaring up. Unfortunately, that ended very quickly as Cena did a can't see me, but immediately The Rock proved that he could indeed see him as he rock bottomed him. <laughs> uh, then 
All of a sudden, the under you hear the under the Undertaker's uh, bell, the dong toll. Lights go out. Lights come back on. Rock's yelling at the entrance, but the Undertaker's standing behind him. Then the Undertaker choke slams the Rock. Then the lights go off again, and when they come back on, everybody's gone, and we're back to just Cody yeah, and Ray. I'm kind of upset. I missed for this the bell. Now. It was epic feeling. I, I didn't get to watch it live again. I just watched a ton of clips. On Twitter, but it was absolutely fantastic. And in the end, Cody Rhodes. And by the way, we're going to do a full WrestleMania recap with Mayo. He was fired up. But in the end, Cody Rhodes overcoming Reigns, becoming the first new world champion in over a thousand days. Fantastic. Fantastic stuff. Yeah, my boys had it on. Did they? Yeah, Knox and Jackson were watching it. I wonder how they like, probably super I wonder hyped. how like John Cena and The Rock staring at each other hits with them though, right? Because were they old enough for the Cena? Well, they never weren't old enough for the Rock era, right? But they, but they, because those people are still so big, yeah, that's and because true. they're they actors now, like they know the history, yeah, for sure. I spent. And they don't like typically watch it. They're not like wrestling heads or anything, but they're like it's WrestleMania. I'm like we're gonna. I spent forty minutes last night trying to explain wrestling to my wife. <laughs> she just does not get it. It's like, wait, so it's, she's like, it's fake? So, like, if the outcomes are decided, like, why do people care? I'm like, no, it's like, it's it's, it's no Scripted, different than yeah. any form of entertainment. It's, yeah, like, yeah. it's like going to a play or a symphony, right? right? Like, the, the 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 magic is a mixture of excellent acting in terms, of like, on the mic and everything. But then also, like, there's a skill. Well, the, the physical improv. Yeah. Because, yes, the results are planned out. But, like, the actual match itself is not. That's too premier athletes reacting off one another, working with one another to tell a very physical and and fantastic story. And she just like refused. She just didn't get it. She was so confused why everybody's just losing their mind when somebody gets pinned. Like, ah! like that's all. I'm like, no, it's like, it's like a soap opera for men. It's fun. Now, the one thing I really was getting frustrated with her about too, she was acting like it was easy on the body. And that was pissed me off. Because, yeah, you may not really be, like, punchy. This isn't like UFC fighting, but wrestling is brutal on your body. I mean, it, it is it is a very injury-prone. You're grinding every single week. You're doing crazy. I ended up having to go all the way back and showing her mankind hell in a cell just to, just to prove the point. Um, oh, Mr. Sacco. I mean, God, did you ever watch that? What was, what was his name when he did that? Yeah, that was no. He was mankind. Mr. Sacco was mankind. No, mankind was okay. And then he had Cactus okay, Jack, yeah. and then dude he love. had Dude Love. Yeah, dude Love. <laughs> um, but uh, if you haven't seen it, the the twenty five minute sit down with the Undertaker and Mankind talking about um, they, they had them sit down and rewatch the Hell in a Cell match and give the behind yeah. the scenes. It is one of the coolest videos you'll ever see, and it's so funny how much of a thespian Mankind is. Yeah. He's talking about like being choke slammed onto um yeah, Mick Foley, thank you. He's talking about being choke slammed on the tax, and he's like, you know, that's where I thought my character really evolved. <laughs> Hour three next. Off the bench with Hester and T Bob. Go to rejuvemedical.com, restore me, refuel me, rejuve me. Go to Rejuve Medical today if you want to fight the effects of untreated aging, which could include Facial aging, andropause, menopause, mood and memory problems, a lack of sleep, weight gain that you can't explain, not seeing the results that you used to from workouts, no energy rolling out of bed, no energy or confidence rolling into bed. I don't care if you're 20, 30, 40, 50, or Taylor. Look, aging happens to us all at different rates, okay? So let Rejuve Me put together a custom plan for you to get you where you want to be, rejuvemedical.com. Yeah, we encourage you to go to that website and check out a full list of conditions that they can treat, they can help you with. But like T-Bob said, Sometimes you just don't know. Like, you don't know what's going on. You think you have a, an idea, but it could be something completely different. That's why you go get that consultation set up. Throughout the state of Louisiana, you'll find Rejuve Me Medical, and you'll always find them online at rejuvememedical.com. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Bayou Ford has the new inventory to get you in a new Ford truck or SUV today or customize your next vehicle just the way you want. All new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile powertrain warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. 
At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Visit us online at reliefwindows.com. Oh, by the way, we do shutters too. Brack teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared towards seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to Good morning. It's 9 a.m. on Monday, April 8th. Today at Bat Rouge, you can expect rainy skies with a high of 76. In hour three of today's show, we'll have weekend winners at 9 a.m. Then we'll talk to Devin Snow, recapping a little WrestleMania, and maybe some Saints thrown in there as well. You can follow us on Twitter or Instagram at OTV underscore ESPN. And watch us on YouTube at the 104.5 ESPN channel. Hour number three of Off the Bench, live from the Mercedes-Benz Veterans Studios, starts now. Let him go! All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Jacob Hester and T-Bob Abear. Yeah, 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 yeah! Off the, the Bench, bench with, with Hester and T-Bob. Hey, Peter, they said I gotta come off the bench. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, that's impressive. Uh, what's going on, y'all? Welcome back. Hour number three of OTB. Dang, I want that thing. I got one. A bullseye? A bullseye pro? Not that exact. Mine's blue. But you you have like a portable like yeah. air uh tire, like you can do like your car tires. Yeah. I've had an incredibly slow leak in a tire for like three or four months now. Mm -hmm. But it's like it's it's just annoying enough to inconvenience me every like two weeks yeah. and make me angry. But also not annoying enough to actually to commit the time to go get it fixed. It's yeah. it's really existing in a gray area where it's just it's it's it's, it's tormenting me. Um, what's up though? Hour number three of OTP. Uh, let's kick it off with a little weekend winners. That's how winning is done. That's right. We can't have anyone freak out out there. Okay. We got to keep our composure. We've got too far. I'm by winning. I win here and I win there. Now what? Are you doing what it takes to win a championship? Wow, winning. Well, then I guess there's only one thing left to do. What's that? Win the whole thing. All right, my first weekend winner. You already know we haven't talked about it yet today because it's been a very full show. But 
Haley Bryant and the Yellow Shoe Gymnastics team getting it done, winning the regional, advancing to the final eight. And Haley Bryant does it on Saturday with not one, but two perfect tens. That's right, the 17 to 18 perfect 10 of her career. LSU's the only team on Saturday to break 198. And again, starting April 18th, they are now into the final eight. Shout out to the number two national seed, your LSU Tigers. I'm going to go Simone Augustus, weekend winner, 2024 Basketball Hall of Fame. Hell yeah. Class. She goes in with Vince Carter and Chauncey Billups. Oh. So a great class. Look, we know how great she is. Obviously, uh, what she did for LSU, what she did for the city before then. Obviously, playing high school basketball here. Uh, we were in school at the same time. It was must watch. We used to go to the PMAC to watch her basketball team. I mean, Sylvia Fowl, Simone Augustus, that was some great times in LSU basketball history, and she very much deserves to get into the Basketball Hall of Fame. And it's always cool to see someone go in with other, like Chauncey Billups and Vince yep. Carter, like popular names, because I feel like you always kind of remember when you're grouped together with other greats like that. Insanity, dude. Even though coming out of UNC, I was always an Antoine Jameson fan. But uh, you Vince be ended up being better. No, no, I was. I was a fan of both, but I thought Antoine was going to be... I used to be Anton, I believe, not Antoine. Antoine. But is it Antoine? Or yeah, Antoine? it's Antoine. I used to have his basketball card. I was a, I was kind of a fan of his as well. Um, who are you play for? The Nuggets? Uh, Wizards is where I remember him the most. Hmm. Shout out Vince Hanna, yeah. Air Canada. I love seeing that. And Chauncey. And then before then, you had Jerry Stackhouse and Rasheed Wallace. Mm. Draymond still doesn't have as many ejections as Texas Sheed. Nah. Legend of the game. Elijah, what you got? Weekend winner, uh, the Spurs. Therefore, oh also God. me. I'm going to tell go you what Spurs I told. And by the way, I we called beat the Pels 111 to 109. So suck it. Uh, Two I called, starters out, and we still won. I called Alondra a road. total pos. He did in the group text. I said go Spurs go, and he said pos. Yeah. And I said dang. You are, you are one. Hey, I'll wear that. Proudly. Literal fecal matter. That's fine. From Victor's butt. <laughs> Which right. actually, to be fair, if we're going to be crapped out of anybody's ass, Victor Wimbiama is probably like a top five ass to be crapped out of. You think? Top five? I don't, um, I don't want to do that. No, probably. I mean, what does that even mean? j -Lo probably up there. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, Who? who's, that, who's that guy on Instagram that I don't know if it's like a butt implant or if he wears like prosthetic, but oh, seen that guy he runs around like in khaki yeah, 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 shorts yeah, yeah. and just like, like he has... He's, he's making millions of dollars just off of that big booty. That'd probably be a top five one for sure, too. Mokova, probably up there. What'd you got, Taylor? Uh, UFL kicker Jake Bates. So here's the deal. He plays for the Michigan Panthers. Opening Shout weekend. out Michigan Panthers. Yeah. Great name, obviously. Um, Jake Bates, 64-yard field goal in week one last weekend to win the game. He hit a 62-yarder this Damn. weekend. Only one field goal was 62 yards or longer last year in the NFL. He's got two, and NFL teams are beating on his door right now trying to get him a contract. So, weekend winner, Jake Bates. Arkansas? Beating and Arkansas? baiting. I, thought, I think he did. I don't know. Well, and, and the 64-yarder last weekend, he hit it twice because the coach did that thing where he calls the timeout Wait, what? Right by the And he snap. made it both he times? He made it. Then he had to kick it again, made it. That was to win the game. That was as time expired. Then a 62-yarder this weekend. Uh, Brian Burgess says, weekend winner, UConn for beating the Gumps. That's fair. Thank you. Thank you for uh, taking care of business. We could not have that. We could not have Alabama playing for a national championship in basketball. So good good looking out getting that done. Uh, my next weekend winner, LSU softball yesterday. Okay, uh, after dropping game one to Florida, they're staring a series loss in the face, down 3-2 in the seventh. They find a way to force extra innings. They then win it in the eighth. And now, 6 p.m. tonight, SEC Network rubber match for Coach Tarina's uh, squad. Who will take home the series? Another top 10 battle between two great teams. Going to be some uh, excellent softball going down in Gainesville tonight, but a massive win on the road last night to force a rubber match in game three. Well, not only did they get that win, T-Bob, so I was I was doing the game yesterday. Oh, nice. They go up 2 nothing. LSU does. Then you give up three straight runs, mm. three innings back to back to back on the road. Florida has all the momentum. You're able to force extras and get the win. So, like, improbable fashion as well. Yeah, for sure. Toughness. Tells you baseball team can stand a learner thing or two from their softball brethren. Definitely Agreed. stay in it.
I mean, every single game feels like no matter what, they they, they stay in it. Yeah. And they don't always yes. they don't win every one of them, but they find a rally to get back in it. So it's been a lot of fun to watch. Uh, weekend winner for me, and I hate this because it's a team that you're trying to catch up to right now, the Dallas Mavericks. They've won 14 of their last 16. They were down 22 points to the Rockets, and they came back. The Mavericks have have really found the perfect chemistry for Luka and Kyrie, and Kyrie had four. I think he had 48, and Luka had 37 in the comeback win. Now we is Ramadan still going on? What is Ramadan still going on? Because Kyrie's been fasting right here recently, right? No, I don't think it is. Okay, I think it, ju- did it just end. I think it just ended. Still, that's insane that he's been not eating or drinking and he's been like playing the best basketball of his year. And last year, they, look, they got clowned because they made this trade for Kyrie and it just it didn't work out. They didn't really ever play together. And when they did, like the results weren't there. And they are taking over games. Now they've got other players on the team, but it is those two guys that are leading the charge. And this is a team, T Bob, that when you play this, you know, this kind of a lineup with two superstars in a seven game series, and Luka might be the best overall player in the NBA. Yeah. They're going to put some fear into everybody. Uh, yeah. It, ended, it ends peaking. tomorrow, actually. I just looked tomorrow? at it. Tomorrow? Yeah. So he's still like starting. So okay, he's that still makes sense. That makes doing sense. That. He just dropped 48. Yeah. After, after the game, like Luka was having to hold him up. Dang. That's crazy. Yeah. Kyrie's had a bit of a renaissance yeah. in Dallas, man. Uh, weekend winner, I want to add to T Bob's softball win, Beth Tarina. So the team made these shirts with her face on them because it was oh, alumni day this. they played florida um tw- if you go on show lsu softball's twitter uh, you have can you find seen it. it show me taylor yeah. yeah so it's like the shirts that everybody wears now that has just like a collage of pictures of the person with their name at the top and it's her in her florida gator yeah. uniform <laughs> oh, I gotta say it was alumni uh, day yeah. when we talk about florida gators that supersede the year of florida gator beth torino of course is one of them yeah yeah cd yeah, yeah. Yeah, the list is uh, not not big, Mm-mm. small list, exclusive list, but they're on it for sure. Aaron Hernandez for sure. I like the Pouncy Brothers. I hate them, but I like them. Taylor, the, if you don't show me a picture of this shirt, I'm gonna Bob, fight I you. I have it, dude. I'm going. Relax. I mean, let's go. I even gave dude. him the. I said it's on LSU softball's Twitter. I, I have it. So for those of you that didn't look at it, they post every single hit on LSU softball. <laughs> it just took me a little bit to find it. Here it is, right here. Y'all relax. Hey, well, hey, look at that, dude. That's great. That's great. Shout out, Coach. Trina. Super awesome. It was worth the five minute wait. The one in the <laughs> the, the top right there in the orange jersey. That's a game face there. Yep. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Um, She's the best. Weekend losers. I forgot mine. What y'all got? I got a weekend loser. So you said it. I forget Texas yeah, I forget Longhorns it. defensive lineman Tavondre Sweat. Why? All you got to do is not screw up. As an athlete, you can actually screw up a little bit and yeah. it's still okay. Well, Tavondre Sweat, projected borderline first round pick. He got arrested Sunday afternoon for DWI. He went to the Travis County Jail just outside of Austin. And Travis don't Um, play. And, yeah, so he he was released but got arrested for DWI. Damn. Um, Two weeks before the NFL draft. Travis County and Williamson County are the worst area. I mean, don't drink and drive, period. But those are like they're looking for you. They will wait for you outside of bars to catch you drinking and driving. I have a weekend loser, though. I don't know yeah. if y'all had other ones. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, the officials in Birmingham. Yeah. Everybody, I don't know if everybody's heard about like the debacle, but Mississippi State and Georgia played this weekend. There was a play at the plate where Johnny Long tagged out a runner. I can't remember who Third it was. out of the inning. Like Third the out eight. of the inning. It's like 2-2. Two, two. It's like a big out. Yeah, yeah. And Long starts jawing at him. We well, taunted is, him, right? He like right. stood over him. It was which like, is, uh, uh, which like, I love. Jawing is okay, but he starts like kneeing him in the ribs a little bit and like pushes him down. Goes, yeah. into, goes into like a 40 minute review. Well, okay, yeah, because what? the So the Georgia bench is. Okay, so it's so third the out. Georgia bench asked so Mississippi the, State is coming off the field, yeah. right? And Georgia's bench is clear. And so both teams end up getting into it. Right. And so at the end of the 40 minute review, they ended up suspend, or yeah, 11 overall ejections. The next day. But they weren't, were, weren't they also majority Mississippi State? Yeah. And they were saying, and so. so Jake, it's a funny situation where it's like the refs were literally saying, well, we couldn't eject some of the 
Georgia players because they had hoodies on and we couldn't see their numbers. <laughs> and then it's like, and, and Lamonis <laughs> is like, my guys are on the field coming off. They came out of the dugout, and yet we end up yeah. with all the ejections. Because yeah. you missed the next game, right? Uh, well, yeah, so the the AD went hard they after reversed. him. Everybody went out, and, and they ended up reversing almost all of the uh, almost all, all the them. ejections, except for so, Hunter Long and a couple others. So only five people total were ejected. Two from Mississippi State, Johnny Long and Logan Kohler, and three from Georgia, Henry Hunter, Fernando Gonzalez, and Daniel Pats. I don't know how to say that. Patsyak. But yeah, I mean, just an overall weekend loser to the officials I mean, in Birmingham. Forty minutes because they yeah, just handled forty that minutes yeah. terribly. You thought you thought LSU South Carolina, like, yeah, you thought LSU South Carolina was it like fifteen minutes? Yeah, fifteen. Yeah. Where they sat there yeah. and just like worked through everything. Forty minutes in the eighth inning of a two-two SEC game, where you just had to play the play. You want to talk about just killing the vibes? Mm-hmm. That is awful, awful. I agree. I mean, the, the 15 minutes here. for LSU South Carolina felt like an hour. Yeah, I mean, what were you, what would you be thinking if you're sitting there for 40 minutes? I'd be furious. I mean, you had to, you know, like it was later in the game, so you probably were going to anyways. But imagine like if that would have happened in the fourth inning, like your starter would have had to come uh, out of the game for sitting for yeah. 40 minutes. And apparently <laughs> like, like, like yeah. the, uh, the umps on the field are like, we're really sorry, guys. Like, I don't know. Yeah, so it's not the umps, not weekend loser to the umps, weekend loser to the officials in Birmingham that were reviewing the call. Real quick, are we giving a weekend loser to the uh, referees in the UConn-Iowa game? Um, No, because by letter of the law, it technically was a moving screen. I don't think you call it in that situation, but it wasn't like it was a complete blown call. I think I think it's interesting because some people tell you it's absolutely a foul. I think it's a bit of a gray area where again, I yes, think, I think so too. Technically, yeah. it is, but like you see it not called all the time. I thought it was pretty, pretty freaking lame, dude. And a ruined was a really exciting game. Up yeah, to the that entire point. like weekend winner, the entire NC. In- NCAA women's tournament. Yeah. It was incredible. Like, there was great action. Sure, we wanted LSU to win it all, but still, like, the action on the court was really, really good. And the championship game was good. Um, I wonder if tonight's championship game is going to be good. Uh, should. Absolutely. I mean, Donovan Klingon versus Zach Eady down low. Two guys that are, like, both over seven foot two, And you got good guard play on both sides. Good game. Zach Eady can't get in IL, but... Yeah, he's Canadian, eh? Mm-hmm. That's crazy. I thought it was because he was unlikable. Dumbass Canadians. All right, when we get back, uh, like that. let's uh, talk to Hold the Mail. Coming up next here on OTB. Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Tommy's! Tommy's Windows, Doors, and Siding. G-E-A-U-X, Tommy's.com. That's go Tommy's. Dot com. Uh, you need any type of door, okay? You need hardy plank or vital signing. You need wood or vinyl windows. Tommy's has you. And when you go to Tommy's, you're going to see the difference clearly. The reason why uh, they've won the Angie Service Award seven years in a row, and it's because they have integrity, it's because they're dependable, they're professional, and they are efficient. Go look at their online reviews. How about this? Five-star review. Fantastic. Fast, efficient, and great cleanup. And now the review disappeared. So take it away, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the website. The website uh, they like yeah, it. You know, it goes review yeah, to review. Yeah, it's got so many reviews that they're just scrolling continuously <laughs> because they can't just have one review on there. You can check out the reviews. GoTommies.com. Testimonials right there on the banner in the top right corner. You can also pick up the phone. Give them a call. Tell them what you're looking for. They'll be out there to help you out. 225-250-8808. GoTommies.com. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. teamed up to reimagine your parks and you imagined big with your help we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish a family-sized water park miles and miles of trails and parks just for your dogs 
there are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. I put, I think I, I so I made my cold brew concentrate yesterday. I think I put way too much in because I'm feeling freaking hype this morning. Also, shout out Evolve, get me right with a little burn class at 5 a.m. today. Let's talk to our guy, hold the mayo, here. For some spread lines. Dev, what's up, brother? How we feeling after a Hogs and WrestleMania filled weekend? Rejuvenated, bro. Wow. Like, yeah, like I got baptized again. God, really? Isn't that so crazy? That's also the feeling that I've had at Hogs before, where it's like even though you party your face off all week and there's something so magical about it that you feel like re inspired or reborn in a way. It's, it's, yeah, it's that Friday night for me, dude. Uh -huh. It's. It, like, compared to that last one you went to, it's gotten probably two times better. What? You know, just, dude. Oh my I mean, I know. God. I was having so much FOMO on Friday night, Dev. It's crazy. How did y'all's 10-minute <laughs> stand-up bit go? Uh, I went about five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I was kind of wondering about that. Mincy calls me the other day. He's like, yeah, me and Dev, you know, we're going to do like 10 minutes of stand-up before I I'm like, what? I love Mincy to death. <laughs> So like exaggerated sometimes, bro. Like <laughs> that's just not what was gonna happen because <laughs> you know what I'm saying. First of all, stand up's hard with two people. Yes, yes. Hard. No, that's what I'm saying. He was like, "Ah, we're just gonna do some crowd work." I'm like, well, "Bro, Vince, I don't, Vince, yeah. I don't know about this." <laughs> it was some crowd work. No, it was some crowd okay. work. Okay, it went great. Yeah, no, it went great. Um, it's so weird, man, because like when you get on a microphone. <clears throat> And you're in front of a bunch of people, like it's hard to really tell if you never did it before, like <clears throat> what the reaction is. But I tell you what, we had some really good reaction. Hell yeah, you know, dude. Like, it was an Iceman special concert. So, you <sighs> know, right when I walked out there, I was like, which one of you which one of you people sold me a bong at the Ross shop? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's a good Let's line, Deb. That's a great right bit. Um <laughs> All right, so no, it, was, it was fun. Tons of people, tons of women, dude, tons of music. <laughs> Tons of vibes. I got handed like three different forms of mushrooms, like yep. crop, capsule, yep. and chocolate. Uh, yep. It was it was just a wild time, man. Yeah, the legal mushroom scene has kind of exploded. Um, well, now it's legal in other parts of the country. The trickle down effect's been pretty interesting to see. Uh, so yeah, I was having extreme FOMO as I'm sitting at home watching the Pelicans and LSU baseball break my heart. But whatever. Um, 
and it's just one of those things, man. I can't even go to second day. It's just like because Fridays like till like three a.m. Yeah, and you know you'd have to be a stone cold psychopath to get up and just go, you know, do it again. So I just stayed home and watched WrestleMania the next two days. Do what I did the year in which I got uh, suspended <laughs> for it. Just don't go to sleep. Just keep <laughs> yeah, going yeah. for forty eight hours straight, and then go take a break. Uh, so speaking of FOMO, Dev, last night. I was having some extreme WrestleMania FOMO, you know? I'm sitting here and I'm watching all the clips on Twitter and I'm trying to piece it all together and it just bums me out. Like, it it, it seemed like the show was so good that it made me sad that I don't pay attention year-round. And that's exactly how it was. Because, I'm, dude, I've been a huge critic of wrestling in the last 10 years. It just hasn't been, like, me being somebody that grew up in the late 90s, it's like, I'll always, like, That'll always be the bar, right? Yeah. And it just hasn't even gotten close, right? Last night was the beginning, or this past weekend was the beginning of the Triple H hour. And they've said this like 10 times, like in the past 10 years. They've said, Triple H is the head of creative. Triple H is, you know, blah, blah, blah. But it was always live. It was always live. Yeah. Because yeah. Vince, was, Vince always, was always there. He was always there. Now it's straight up. Triple H's show, and they're partnered with the same people that own UFC. So, like, everything from, like, they're doing the press conferences like UFC does, like what Dana White does and stuff after the fights and stuff. They're doing all that. Like, it's just dressed up so much better. Yeah. And just the star power, bro. Like, people who deny wrestling because it's fake, that's great. Like, live your life, nobody's listening. You know what I'm saying? But I, I tried to explain to my wife last night. I'm like, it, it's like, it's like reading a comic book or a superhero movie or – going to the symphony. It's just live, incredible entertainment. Like you're so, you're so like uh, hung up on the fact that they're pretending to fight. Like that doesn't take away from the product. It's not what the product is. If you want fighting, go watch UFC. Exactly. And, 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 and look, here's the people that were just that, that I observed T pain. Drew, first of all, to get T pain, that is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Drewski, Wale, two chains, George Kittle, uh, Lane Johnson, Jason Kelsey, Lil Baby, Lil Wayne, Meek Mill, Snoop Dogg, you know, like, this stuff is undeniable. It sounds like Pat Mahomes like, talking about his post-Super Bowl party. <laughs> <laughs> no, the weekend was there, yeah, pretty well, man. <laughs> Deb, I, I was curious because obviously it was in Philly and it was outdoors and, and you sold out like this massive stadium. Like, what's the plan if it rains? I was going to wear the too. I guess you just do it anyway. Like, I mean, do you, like yeah, because obviously the stadium can handle it, but you got a lot of LEDs out there as well. Like I don't know. Like, do they have a? Do you know that they have a plan in place that if they have bad weather? Yeah, I don't, well, I know this. It was forty something degrees most of the time. So the, after the first night, like right when they did the press conference, Triple H, he was like, "Dude, I ain't even gonna lie to you. Everybody was freezing. The fans were freezing. <laughs> the wrestlers were freezing. Like it was super cold." Now, if it would have rained, I don't know. Yeah. I guess they would have. <laughs> nah, I, mean, I think the show must go on, dude. I think you just yeah, wrestle I mean, in the you, rain. That'd you, be pretty badass, You're playing actually. that so far ahead. Like, you can't watch the uh, weather. So, Dev, I know a lot, like, last night is drawing a lot of comparisons to something like Avengers Endgame, right? Where yeah, yeah. you have, um, you had, okay, so first Reigns got Cody, right? Then Cena F5s Reigns. Then Cena gets rock bottom. Then the Rock gets right, choke let's slam. Back up the bus. Okay, let's okay, back, back it up, back it up. Lead, little, lead me through it here. Well, because WrestleMania is two nights now, which is something new to most people who haven't, you know, that's two nights. All right, the first night was was really solid. They start the second night. It, it's, a, it's a title match um, between Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre. Well, they had a money in the bank cash in, which in my opinion, is one of the most brilliant ideas WWE ever came up with the money in the bank thing because yeah. one dude walks around with a suitcase for a year and he can cash in for a title shot. It don't matter if yeah at is. any time at any time yeah if the champion's incoherent passed out you know what I'm saying yeah this dude can walk up on him and cash in well sure enough Damon Priest he cashed in it was the eclipse oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> y'all done. Y'all know, y'all know WWE don't play by that. Dude. <laughs> we gotta have Peacock, bro. They're gonna check your subscription status, bro. <laughs> hey, but no. It so, was, what uh, was your favorite one? What was your favorite uh, moment then from from Endgame? Oh, from Endgame, I'd probably say Undertaker, just because 
it'll never get old, man. And 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 he is WrestleMania, so you can't yeah. have a WrestleMania. I don't care if Undertaker is in a wheelchair, dude. You you better turn off the lights, hit the dong, and mm-hmm. let him show up in the wheelchair. You know, it's just it's something about Taker at WrestleMania. <laughs> and then The Rock, you know, The Rock was awesome, bro. The Rock the night before. Um, I don't know if y'all saw him in the ring, dude. He looks great. No, he looks like, he looks fantastic. He really does. And it's so hard to like keep your body. You know, to where it can move like that. The only people I know that can really move after, you know, being a wrestler 25 years ago, it's him, Rey Mysterio, uh, Jericho. You know, there's only a few people. A lot of them are dead or, or really hurting, bro. Do you think, uh, <laughs> were you at all surprised that they let Cena get rock bottomed immediately after the Can't See Me? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, because even though John Cena played a huge part in getting wrestling, you know, or keeping it afloat, I guess. I don't know. I yeah. stopped watching him when John Cena came because he was just too corny for me. But he's I, he's growing respect on me, and um, no, The Rock is just a level above Cena. You the know, final respect boss. Me. Exactly, respectfully. And the final, final boss, because you had WrestleMania, was Taker. Look at Taker, bro. I mean... I love... It, I mean, The Rock's face when he turns around and sees Taker, uh, <laughs> where it's... And you can tell his acting chops there because he looks... You know, it's like he's too much of a man to look full scared, but you can see the fear simmering underneath his eyes and then uh, yeah. immediately gets choke slammed and then disappears. Yeah, I, I see Edward O in, in the chat. Rock is so played out at this point. Brother, I just don't get where you're coming from on that because the Rock hasn't really appeared like in a ring like that, but maybe three times since he, you know, retired. So it, they needed the Rock, bro. Cody Rhodes does not, Yeah, I don't know. Bro, like he gets on the mic, bro. You're not gonna be like, oh man, Cody Rhodes is on the mic. You know, like they needed the rock. He played a bad guy. He played it well. He went after the family, like really sold it to where when Cody Rhodes won, everybody was excited. Isn't it kind of crazy crazy journey for Rhodes as well? I mean, quits the WWE, what starts AEW, gets that pretty <laughs> huge, then comes back to WWE and now put over the top, uh, ending a thousand day title streak from, uh, from Roman Reigns. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I'm not a huge Cody Rhodes fan, Mm. but that's, that's only because I look at it from an entertainment perspective. I don't care how good you wrestle. You know what I'm saying? You got to be in. He has respect in the wrestling department though, right? Like he does crazy stuff. Rhodes does. Yeah. He's a great wrestler. I mean, dude, he's, He's been in the game. This dude was Stardust at one point, you know, and it, <laughs> it was basically like Goldust, but Stardust, you I mean, know. Uh, his dad's Goldust, comes, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. By the way, Goldust, one of the best, bro, like ever. I, that that he wants about entertaining Goldust, bro. That dude was yeah. great. He was. I mean, even even Grandpa was very entertaining. No doubt, Dusty Rose, and that, I think that's what plays into me, like not being big on Cody Rhodes, because like those two dudes right there. Goldust and then Dusty Rhodes, like, he just ain't the same person. I mean, I know they're family, but he's not the same person. And I'm not expecting him to be, but it, it's that entertainment quality that I think he lacks, bro. Um, so is wrestling back? Yeah, I think it is. I think it is, bro. I, I really do. I really do. Two nights, and, and, and when it ended last night, bro, I felt really good. You know what I'm saying? I felt like yeah. a little kid at that kind of, bro. I hate it. Yeah, I really did, man. It was it was a spectacle, bro. It was it was you know the worst one of the worst parts about it was like Lil Wayne doing the entrance, and that's crazy for me to say. Wow. But, you know, stop making this guy sing a Millie. You know, stop it. <laughs> you, I do like it, a Millie though. Dude. Wow. <laughs> it's my favorite Max Out song. I feel you. I feel you. I I I, I didn't, wait. So what they 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 made him what sing that? For in what in what context? Like he was like coming out. While Jay Uso, like he was the that guy basically hyping up Jay Uso when he walked out, um, and you know he sang eight words, and I don't know, but he sounded like a little mosquito. You know, it was really bad. <laughs> um, it was really bad. Dev, I thought this was pretty cool. Mac Lindsay in the chat saying after the main event last night, Triple H, Nick Khan, and producer Bruce Pritchard gifted Cody yeah. a watch that Dusty Rhodes had pawned so Cody could go to acting school. Yeah, I know. That's a great story. The one thing I'll say is I couldn't really 
understand that because why did Dusty Rhodes have to pawn something? Yeah, I don't know. I was kind of wondering that as well. I don't know. Dusty Rhodes. Well, I mean, but, but it aren't, aren't, I mean, that era of wrestling, especially notoriously exploited, right? The wrestlers themselves in Dusty's time. Yeah. yeah. Um, but Dusty was so big in wrestling, like even like before he died, like he was the head of NXT talent, you know? Um, hmm. I don't know. Look, bro. Congrats to Cody Rhodes. Uh, I hope it works out and I hope he does something I've never seen before. And he, you know, um, become super entertaining. I'm just not a huge, huge fan, but I see Dame and Dame 26 in the chat, bro. That choke slam was weak AF, brother. Undertaker is 60 years old. He gave you everything. <laughs> he gave you everything. <laughs> it was a little weak, but again, the moment's not really about the choke slam. You know that that's not the 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 the, the, the moment is him showing up and the Rock turning around and having that fear in the final boss's eyes. Right, right. Uh, 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 Ego turn in the chat. Hard Times promo, man. Ever heard of it? Yeah, dude. I've been living 31 years. Of course I heard the Hard Times promo. <laughs> She's these days, man. <laughs> they think, I mean, dude, everybody thinks I was born yesterday. I, I, you know. <laughs> Well, Taylor well, and Alondra were b- born yeah. yesterday. They're 16. And to be fair, you did say that you were reborn Friday, which isn't that far <laughs> off of yesterday. I guess that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Deb, what else is going on at Spread Quarters this week? How's the Respect Your Body beer going? Uh, it's coming out, I believe, in the beginning of May. It was supposed to come out in Hell April. Yeah, yeah we, we, we had to push it back a little bit. So the beginning of May, I got some Respect Your Body merch out, uh, hmsports.com. Uh, slash shop, and then uh, you got Solar Eclipse today, bro, on RBNR Day, which should be pretty fascinating. Oh, wow. I guess. You're going to be oh, eating red beans and watching the eclipse? It's dope yeah. for retinas, dude. <laughs> yeah, I got, I'm got. i getting some of the glasses right when I get off the phone, which I'll hopefully not sold out, because um, that would really put a wrench into things, you know? Uh, or you just pull a Trump, just stare at it anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One of the funniest pictures I've ever seen in my entire life still. <laughs> Oh, uh, other than that, man, you know, great weekend. Uh, I did see Derek Carr get on IG Live, man. It was, it was, it was, it was a hard one. Wait, should I, should I go watch this? I saw you commenting about it. Should I go watch it? Yeah, I just think that Derek Carr, like, really chill guy. I get it, family guy. You know, all that stuff. But like, he can't even help it, but to like say things that make him look blatantly paranoid. You know, it's mm. just he's like, hey, my kids. You know, they wanted to go, uh, they've been wanting to go camping. He's like, so I set them up tents in the house. I'm like, brother, you know, bring these dudes camping, dude. Like, <laughs> why are we in the house? Uh, Deb Snow at Snow Like John. Hold the mayo. RB and R day today. Eclipse day. And uh, my man's feeling good after a great Hey, weekend. shout out Brennan Allen, too. UFC fighter. Seven straight wins from Covington, Louisiana. Okay. He'll be competing for a title in the next year. Uh, hell yeah, man. There you go. Uh, Dem Snow, Spread Quarters, Y'all live from Spread Quarters. Spread lines every single Monday here on OTV. The legend himself. Uh, Dame says UFC 300 coming in hot this weekend. Alondra, what's the status on... Shoot, I forgot the name. Bad Corner Advice. Yes, Bad Corner tomorrow. Advice. Tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow. Yes. Alondra's first UFC, UFC pod breakdown. dropping in tomorrow. So go ahead and uh, get ready to give it a listen. We'll be breaking down 300. Hell yeah. Love it. Uh, all right. I keep saying we. It's just me. Yeah, no, yeah. okay. You confuse me every time you yeah. say we. But I get it. It's like a collective we. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like, like you're Let's part of the talk community. Let's all 300. Yes, exactly. Exactly. All right. When we get back, we're to be. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. Trash Rangers. I ho silver. You need somebody... Is going to give you better uh, service than you're currently getting from your trash company, a local company, if you will. Well, guess what? If you live in Livingston or Central Parish, you're lucky because you have a choice. You don't have to be beholden to these national companies that keep the trash in Louisiana but extract the profit out, okay? You can deal with the red cans, the red trucks, and the local people over at Trash Rangers. The people that care, the people that are more reliable, that are more efficient, the people that text you the night before to, rem- to remind you to put out your cans. The people that if you go to TrashSignUp.com, in just three minutes, you can see your days, your number of cans, your prices, everything. The people that continue to garner great reviews and everybody who makes the switch tells me how happy they are. Trash Rangers. Go to the website, TrashRangersLLC.com. Always pick up the phone. Give them a call, 225-401-0838.
Our listeners fire off their opinions on the jimsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the jimsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. sunrise to sunset, (laughs) playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further. Like vans customized for work or play with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine at sunequip.com. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. I think Musselman feels a little weird. Like, surely Musselman wanted a bit more of, like, Arkansas fans pining over him. And now they're just like, huh, later, nerd, have fun in L.A. Yeah, well, you also, like, Eric Musselman is a West Coast guy. Yeah, yeah, which apparently was a lot of the friction because he's been trying to actively get out there for a couple of years, reportedly. I mean, he... Anybody want me? He played at San Diego, um, was been at Arizona State, been at Nevada, uh, was the head coach at the Kings, I think head coach at Golden State as well. So he's been a California guy for a very long time. Um, noted Chargers fan, by the way. There's the few that are out there. Uh, so like him getting out Proud. there, like that's that's not surprising. This is the place that Rest. he's probably been trying to get to for a while. Um, I don't know why this family stuck out to me watching the Pels last night, but is there a better sound in sports than the rip of the net? I mean, you know, they, when they, when they, they they've got those rims super mic'd up, and my God, when it's a when it's a clean just. Oof. Like, is anybody in here, would, <clears throat> would anybody in here consider themselves an ASMR person? 
I know you maybe, are. Maybe not to the extent where you're sitting there like watching ASMR videos, right? Like I don't watch ASMR videos, but I have I definitely have sounds that get a little like pretty tingly from. Right? I mean, that is, that is a good sound, especially when it's a big three, right? And mm. you hit it, you hear the swish, and right after that, the crowd erupts. Like that's a, that's a good sound. Can you think of a better ASMR sound in sports? Uh, the sound of a baseball hitting yeah. a wooden bat. Oof. Oof. Like a I solid, was pure, say, yeah. just a, like a pure, pure solid. Hit. Not, not, yeah. and, and we ain't talking aluminum bats here. No, wood. We are talking a wooden crack. The sound, or like a the good pitch. Thunk, thunk. The pitch yeah. hitting the catcher's mitt. I yep. love that song. Yep. Too. Joey LeBlanc says baseball popping a mitt is yes. arguably better. The one that they were playing on McAfee show of Skeens the other day. Oh yeah. yeah. Especially when a catcher kind of reaches forward and pow, like I slaps see. at yeah. it, and it just like, well, that was you know whatever tiny hands. Not that, yeah. that didn't. It's all right. Wasn't mm. getting the effect across, mm -hmm. but you know. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, because there's not a lot of sounds in football that you can. The football sounds like. It's like, <laughs> just like the kind of general, like. A lot of like the general crunching yeah, like, like, and grunting. Like to her point, like the pads are great, but like it happens so often. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that smooth three, that big pop of the bat doesn't happen as often. Like you're cracking pads every single play. Well, it's a more singular sound. Yeah. Whereas yeah. the football sound is more like, like a general, yeah, it's like a general continuous rumbling. That's a good way of describing it. Hockey has some good sounds. Your skeins um, hitting the... And a strike over the edge. That sounds hey beautiful. Um, what would hockey's be? I mean, you can hear like when... The I puck mean, slap the, is The puck nice. slap, yeah, yeah. You, you can hear it. I mean, just skating just in general. Puck. Yeah, you, you know, can hear just skating, like, yeah. Shh, shh, yeah, these guys are skating along. Good hit against the glass. Sounds great. This one doesn't do it for me, but I understand why it would for some. A good tee shot. As oh yeah, mentions. that's a yeah. great, great, Rips great. Rips through call. the wind. Yeah, bird, bird song <laughs> in the air, and you just hear it's the same thing as the bat. Just a flush yeah. thunk. Just a yeah. lighter thunk. Especially when you hit it like on the sweet spot, like yes. on the fat the part sweet of the spot. Yeah, the, yeah, exactly. Or in golf as well. Like you're watching the Masters, it's real quiet. It's a big moment. They hit that putt and you hear dunk, and it yeah. falls oh, into yeah, the bottom yeah, of the yeah, hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good golf one. ball in the cup. In the cup. That's yeah. what yeah. I'm saying. Golf ball in the cup is yeah. a great yeah. one. That's yeah. a good call. Yeah. Um, all right, when we get back, let's do some Ask the Bench. Brought to you by Cole Kerr's Light, Vizzy Hard Tilter, and Blue Moon, Lot Sky, Citrus Sweet. Off the Bench with Hester and T Bob. K to Z window coverings. It's as easy as one, two, three when you work with K to Z. Um, have Brandon Barton out of your home and take advantage of his decades of experience as he's going to blow you away with the amount of information that he can offer you about what window coverings can do to upgrade your home. Whether we're talking about Outdoor living spaces, man caves, kids' bedrooms, living rooms, whatever the case may be, both aesthetics and function. Let K to Z take your home, starter home, your home of your dreams. Does not matter. Price points for everybody. Let K to Z take your home to the next level. K T O Z blinds.com. Yeah, go to the website, check out what they can do for you. Like T Bob said, it's interior, it's exterior, and sometimes it's something that you don't even know is going to affect both. Like I've had with our outdoor screen that they put in a couple of months ago. Check them out online. Find all that information at k2zblinds.com. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. Light? Oh shoot, I forgot to play the song. I got a guy who can fix this. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. There it is. 
the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. With Hester and T-Bob. Does a dynamic culture with incredible opportunities around the globe sound intriguing to you? What about a career with outstanding benefits? What about being an employee of the largest electrical and instrumentation contractor uh, in the entire country? Well, that's even Mar Group. And guess what? They're headquartered right here in Baton Rouge. So you want to get that career? You're a student. Get in touch with the MMR group and you can see the pathways for internship and everything that they offer. But what if you're a seasoned pro or you're just beginning your career? We still want to hear from you. Apply now at MMRGRP.com, MMRGRP.com and see what the MMR group can offer you. You can also go to Google. If you type in MMR group, it's going to pull it up. And then right there, it's going to have careers. You can click on that link as well. So multiple ways to check those out. MMRGRP.com. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales service and finance